here with my co-host. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, I guess this way. I got to go this way now. It's very awkward going because for me, you're this way, but on camera, you're this way. But uh, I, to them, we're this way. So what's um, up, everybody? <laughs> That is true. <laughs> this is Blaze Sarah. I'm joined here with Ryan Edwards. Welcome to Magic After Dark. And we are so excited to bring in our guest of the evening. Should we should we let him know who it is? Should we let him know? Okay. Nah, they well, know we'll, see. we'll see. All right, this let's is, go. Here we go. Mr. <laughs> Nick Seriano. Hi guys. Yeah, the whole night is going to be going? Going, ladies and gentlemen with sound effects and uh and blocking the camera. Would you yep. expect anything less from <laughs> anything less from this show? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh we are now on YouTube everybody. This is uh after weeks of us just finding more reasons to be frustrated with Instagram, <laughs> we've decided <laughs> to jump on youtube is is the much better platform um or maybe we should try maybe we should jump to tiktok i mean uh nick maybe you can enlighten us on uh on how yeah, we can start we killing the tiktok game yeah but we're, we're so excited to it. have you here i'm gonna jump over to the uh, the comment section yes he's in the title yes. we know x i know he's in the title <laughs> <laughs> I know he's in the title but we needed to set up him doing the show thing uh, it was cool it was worth it that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope it was uh yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody already said the guy from TikTok. There is me. Whoa, that's you, the guy from TikTok. So uh, yes, we're so excited to uh, to have you here, man, and uh, talk about your journey in uh, in magic and in content creation, in uh, in go. being an epic alpha male pro gamer, <laughs> thick boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your what was your Instagram bio? <laughs> it was like hashtag epic alpha male thick gamer boy or something. <laughs> Which, I don't know. If you check the YouTube description, it yeah. may or may not say that. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> so we've I got uh like it's just gonna be like a lot of laughs, a lot of like really dumb jokes to kick off our YouTube uh, series, which is, which is, which is amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> I, mean, I, could, I wouldn't want it any other way. No, no, exactly. Exactly. So, so oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Nick. And so am I the first guest on YouTube? On the, on you the YouTube? are. You wow. are the first guest on YouTube. Yes, sir. I'm honored. This is amazing, guys. Got Thank you. HD cameras. We can see your baby Yoda in the background. <laughs> I mean, this is what widescreen does, boys. But yeah. It's uh, so much nicer actually having like decent cameras now instead of just on our front of our iPhones and stuff. Yeah. Looking microscopically to see questions and stuff. It was always exactly. Really we can actually see everybody's chat. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so. we won't lag like 9,000 times in an episode. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Can, can we just rant about Instagram for the whole episode? Yeah. <laughs> let's just, yeah. let's just, just trash talk Instagram. Uh, Nick, you got anything bad to say about Instagram? Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. So, should we? I'll explain how it works, Nick. So, but you know, mo both me and Blaze know you. I mean, people thought I was you or. Well, I guess you're younger, so maybe people thought you were me mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. So I always yeah. think we could call you up and chat on the phone or, or hop on and do this any time of the week. But what we like to do is give an opportunity for the guests um, to answer questions from the viewers. So viewers out there, people watching, throw your questions up. We'll look through your questions, try to answer every single question you have, whether it's for Nick or Blaze or myself, throw it up there. Uh, we try to go through absolutely everything, and and then we've got a couple special segments planned for tonight, which uh, yes, sir. I'm not going to say anything else because uh, they're they're going to be epic. I'm yeah. nervous. So. Yeah, Nick. Nick asked me uh, if he should prepare to talk about anything, and I said we've got some segments that you definitely won't be able to prepare for, <laughs> so don't worry. Yeah, we've got some questions that are life changing for you, Nick. Oh, I, my life was changed just yeah. going through the questions that we were going okay. to ask. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yes, now, right. that's, a, that's a question. Should we ask like one of those questions, like one of the life changing questions? Should we ask one of those like every just once in a while? Because I don't think we can like hit him with all of them all at once because they're. Yeah, then I might die. It might be. <laughs> yeah. I might die. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sprinkle them in. We'll pepper them in a little bit. We've got our rapid fire questions where we'll give you like a countdown timer and stuff so that we can, you know, we can really, uh, you know, get, get some, get some of the, we've got our serious questions. And then we've got our ultra serious questions. There's no silly questions yeah. here. Uh, so oh X God. has a question. He says, I has question. How do you does? So uh, I does, um, I does how I do. <laughs> would it be, would it do? Pretty cool, That's right? Be. That's it. That's pretty good. <laughs> wow. That was almost good. Nice. Also good. Uh, Mateo <laughs> says, has a card ever ricochet and hit you in the face? So for people that don't know, Nick, uh, I feel like the, I, just, I mean, you do so many different things because you have a lot of different talents, but I feel like the way that you were introduced to a lot of the magic community was because of your like badassness at throwing cards so <laughs> so uh, if you want to just before we get into has a card ever ricochet and hit you in the face how'd you get into card throwing and uh you know are you still into it like you know what was your journey yeah. with card throwing uh, i mean i wouldn't say um i wouldn't say a lot of different talents i would just say a lot of different distractions <laughs> 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 but uh, um yeah i mean like i got into card throwing because i was into magic and then magic led to card throwing and it was one of those things where like uh I mean, I've I've been doing magic and uh, for for since I was in like the first grade, I remember bringing like the pen through bill to class mm -hmm. and like putting it through my earlobe. <laughs> so like, that was kind of like what I was earlobe, doing. Yeah. Pen, yeah, pen through earlobe. So um, <laughs> Ryan, but, uh, your uh, your camera. Okay, never mind. We're good. Froze for a sec. But uh, and then that kind of led to so the second grade. I was in um, I was in summer camp. Um, and I actually went to magic camp as well, but we don't talk about that. Um, but yeah, I was in, uh, I was in summer camp and then the camp counselor there. So I happened to throw cards and he had one of like the thick cards. Cause back then, um, you, you know, the stage performers, when they threw cards, they would use thicker cards. It was like, it was like almost like a thickness of like four cards to was, like stuck together. Um, and that magician, uh, a magician camp counselor, uh, coincidentally had, a pack of those cards and he was like into card throwing and then he kind of taught me how to throw cards he gave me one of those i don't have it anymore because i was young and dumb and um and then yeah they kind of just became an obsession and then i was into like uh, comic books like gambit and uh and that kind of just like kept growing and then i eventually started doing it on youtube and that kind of just took off it was very like unexpected i kind of just posted a card throwing video of me throwing my car like cards at my friends and hurting them and i was like this is so dumb and <laughs> it got a lot of traction and That's i was like okay i guess people like it <laughs> so when when did you start posting your first youtube videos because i know that you have kind of like a squad back in new jersey that was like yeah. a friend group and you guys would like film stuff together was it always with the group or did you start off by yourself on youtube and then bring your friends in well that well that kind of started with uh because i was very into like filmmaking and like i loved creating like fight scenes and stuff and like and i was shooting on like my ipad when i was young and edited it in like iMovie and then i went into a film class and then I was like, oh, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. So I put together the squad and we did a lot of short films before I ever posted the card throwing stuff. And that really didn't get any, tra uh, you know, get any traction or anything. And then, uh, and then it was my, it was my senior year of high school uh, when I posted my first card throwing video and that kind of like did well, it kind of like popped off. And it was like, I was, I wasn't getting any views on YouTube. I was getting like, if I was lucky, I was reaching a hundred views per video. Mm. And then I posted the card throwing video and it hit like, it went to like a hundred thousand views, which was like insane. I thought I was wow. famous. I was like, I'm famous. This is it. This is, this is my break. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is it. I'm this retiring. It. I succeeded. I'm retiring. But uh, yeah, that the, you know, that's kind of how it happened. And then I was like, okay, I got to start taking this seriously. And that's when I, you know, it might have might have been stupid at the time because like I was a high school wrestler and like for the longest time, like that's all I did. I was wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. And uh, that's what my parents pushed me to do. And that's like was like my goal to get a college scholarship for wrestling. And then my senior year of high school, I got a lot of views and was like, screw it. I'm out of wrestling. And I quit <laughs> wrestling and pursued social media. And it was like at the time, stupidest thing ever. But like, I'm so glad that I went that route because it was, yeah. it was a, it was a very scary route. But I just knew it. Like I was like, this is what I want to do, you know. Like, and I've wrestled for so long, and it was so miserable for me. So I was like, this is not what I want to do. Even you know, and continue it in college. So, so I ended up. If you do cards, we may now have like Nick, the UFC fighter. 
maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't like Carl McGregor, but or even like the Nick the like, not famous at all <laughs> legit wrestler. <laughs> yeah, basically, and that was like, uh, and that was kind of the route that I went with it of because you know the the uh, you know the video did well. And that, and that was my only way to get a scholarship. Like I'm a dumb kid, like in school, terrible, worst student ever. Um, uh, and I was not going to get to college. I was going to, ha- you know, so that was like my only route. And like, I did clubs, you know, like wrestling clubs every single summer. I wrestled every single day of the week. Um, that's all I did every day. And my parents were like pushed me to do that like crazy. And it was just something I didn't want to do. And that, then the, the one video doing well, I just like got this weird sense of like, I can make this my job. This is what I want to do. And then I was like, I went to my wrestling coach. I was like, I'm quitting. And he was like, well, are you nuts? Like, <laughs> it's like, this is senior year. This is when you're going to get a scholarship. How are you I was like, get college? <laughs> exactly. He's like, you're an idiot. You're not getting to college. So, but, uh, but no, uh, luckily, you know, the, the, you know, the magic was able to, to, uh, to take over my life in a, in a good way. And so then was a lot of your content magic focused for a while after that? Yeah, so uh, all of it was card throwing and magic related, um, and um, and like it was tough because like I, I I wasn't I wasn't knowledgeable. Um, I was with the card throwing because like I did a lot of research on it, um, but it was like one of those things where like I was learning as I was posting, and again like that's why like I stopped posting stuff that I, you know, stuff from other people. Like I, I made it a, you know, a focus of mine to post stuff that I created in a way. Mm. Cause like, it, it was just, I was running into too many problems with like, you know, my main thing is like, and that's why I don't necessarily post a lot of magic tutorials anymore. And I just focus more on the gaming was because um, there's a lot of really, really, really great teachers on YouTube right now who should be teaching magic. And I just felt myself that I shouldn't be teaching magic. And that's why like, I primarily went into card throwing um, and then slowly I started dabbling in magic and I started come up, coming up with my own effects and, 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 you know, I don't think so I started posting those, but it just became a lot to think of effect every, like new mm-hmm. effects every single week to post and make sure I wasn't copying effects from somebody else and doing my research. So it, it was like, that's kind of like how the gaming thing came about. Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting part of the community is the yeah. amount of people <laughs> you do anything in magic and someone's like, Oh, uh, I wrote that down on a napkin uh, yeah. three years ago. What are you doing? That man? was a I'm problem. Like I was stuff. exactly. I was posting. I was, I was posting something. Someone was like, "Oh, I released that eight years ago on a DVD in the bonus features section of the DVD." Yeah. And I was like, "How would I have known that?" I was like, "How would I have known that you did yeah. that?" You know is what I mean? Happen, right? Is they like attack you? Like you should know? Like how do you not know who I am? It's like yeah, one release on the market. You know, fifteen years ago. Uh, yep. And you sold twelve copies of it, you know, yep. uh, at, a, at a carnival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at a carnival. <laughs> I saw at my local state fair. I was yeah. I was trading it for turkey legs. Uh, <laughs> Nick, can you can you repeat after me? Can you say my name is? My name is Masturo. Mestero, card throw a kiss, throw, card throw a kiss. <laughs> yeah, X uh, said, Make him say it. Yeah, yeah. so Mastero you got it. X he said, Mestero, card throw a kiss. <laughs> that was like, uh, that was like an old character that we used to do on my channel because a lot of my stuff was based around like skits and stuff. It wasn't essentially like me throwing cards. Cause like, again, like it's, it's been done a thousand times, you know, like it's been, everybody's seen, you know, throwing a card and cutting a piece of celery. So I was like, how do I put a different unique spin on card throwing? And it was like, just doing like card throwing skits. And that was like one of the characters. He was like my one buddy, Evan. And he would like dress up in this character and become this like, he was like, you know, the cliche, like magician who was like really mystic. And like, I don't know, it was funny. <laughs> so you're like, let me cut carrots instead nobody's exactly. doing that that's what i said <laughs> uh, dementors breath had a great question uh he said uh what do you believe are your strengths and weaknesses in your talents or something you strive to get better at because like we see you all the time and you're doing all kinds of different like i've seen you know obviously your fighting stuff which is always pretty epic you know, your card throwing all your other video stuff. Now you're into mm-hmm. gaming uh, and streaming that stuff. It's like, uh, you know, what do, what do you what are you striving to be better at? Like, what is what's your weaknesses right now that you, you see? I think striving to be better at is definitely just being better at um, everything. Really, it's kind of just like 
Um, I mean, my weakness, I guess I'll start there, is like being distracted with a bunch of different things at one time. Like I never could have that primary focus just because that's how I've always been. I always want to do everything and anything. So it's like that's kind of my main weakness. And then that adds into like what I want to be better at. And it's like all the stuff that I'm trying to do. It's uh, it's tough to really focus down. Like I would love to sit and spend time practicing magic and I would love to spend time practicing and learning new softwares for editing. And I would love to go train to fight. And I would, it's like, there's so much stuff that I would like to do. And I guess that is my strengths and my weaknesses. Um, yeah, and I, I, well, what so you say? I really feel like, you know, I, I joked around before because people are like, I know what we met, what, like three, four, five years ago, something like that. And everybody yeah. thought that we were each other, right? Everybody yeah. was like, because oh, <laughs> I didn't have a big long beard at that point. Yeah, we looked identical. Like, I didn't have my dyed hair. Yeah, we did look. And funny. the thing is that I've only known Ryan since beard, like post beard Ryan. No. So the thing is that I can't imagine him looking identical to you. <laughs> so yeah, it's just so very, funny. Uh, yeah, we. Side by side, we were pretty close, and yeah. so people, I was also back then. I was in shape, you know, so I didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we looked the same. Now we don't. Well, you're like I'm fat. <laughs> and I was like, you know, like, I've so I've gained some weight. Some people play. Yeah. Games, watch my I've been playing video games. I gained weight. I dyed my hair. Ryan, I don't uh, look like you anymore, man. Yeah. I grew my beard, <laughs> and it started actually just coming through the top. <laughs> Very weird. It's like. When you get so old, that's what happens is your hair stops going up and it starts coming back down. So your hair is actually the same length. Exactly. Wow. It just starts going through the face. That's why I started wearing the bandana. Yeah. So, the, so like, it's here and the <laughs> more I start to it. lose, I start yeah. to do this. So eventually it'll be up there. And yeah, so I mean, it's, it's just... <laughs> it's just, you're just fighting it. The bandana is just holding it there so it doesn't go down. <laughs> As, I, I was going to tell you, Nick, get ready for it, buddy, because, you, you know, we looked alike a couple of years ago, and now I'm a little older. You only got a couple more years of uh, the hair, and then it's... Oh, I, I, do, I mean, yeah, I mean, my dad at, like, age 24 started, he's, you know, I saw pictures of him, and he has nothing up there, so yeah, I'm, I'm losing other, it soon. Other family members was the same, was, like, they were in late 20s, and they were gone, and uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I'm i good. I, I'm, I'm 35 now, so... But, yeah, uh, so you're good. You got a nice head of hair for 35. Let's uh, bring it up. That's all. <laughs> Ryan's like, Nick, I'm the ghost of your future. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> like from Christmas Carol. Yeah. <laughs> the ghost of beards past. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nick, this is your future. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, Nick, I am your father. <laughs> 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 Most <laughs> of hairlines passed. <laughs> but, uh, um, someone, Sasha, saying uh, something about your. Uh, it, wait, someone said, "Blaze, yeah. are you okay? It looks like you're. Why are both of us getting dissed back to back? It looks like I'm yeah. sinking. Are you just talking it's about because I'm in a? It's not good. I don't have. Because I'm leaning back in my chair. Back. What? <laughs> what do you mean? That's I don't it. think I'm sinking. I'm gonna pump my chair. Oh, my chair's already up the sides. It can go. So I'm not gonna get any more. Yeah, no, I think you sound you sound fine to me, Ryan. Um, and that's all that matters, you know. Uh, love you, bro. Yeah. So, anyways, let's get back up there. Uh, but uh, but Nick, I find like talking about wanting to do everything. I'm the same way. People have always said to me like, Ryan, if you just focused on, you know, doing mentalism or magic, like you'd be so much further ahead. But I like building things and I like, you know, doing all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. yep. well, he said to me just what yesterday or two days ago, he's like, how do you have time in your day to do all of this stuff you're doing? You know, um, exactly. so I find like, mm -hmm. but for me, like it's it's not exciting if I'm not doing like 10 different things. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, I think if you do one thing and, and you're stuck doing one thing, if like COVID has showed, hopefully shown magicians that like. For those guys that just did magic that some of them couldn't get into the virtual scene right it was like their careers have like plummeted in the last year that yep. where i went oh well i just started doing more carpentry stuff and you know and exactly. like building mm -hmm. things and and that stuff took off uh because mm -hmm. people were you know wanting stuff now to make their houses better and stuff so 
you know, for me, it's always been, yeah, like when one avenue closes, it's okay because I've got 12 other ones I'm working on, right? Exactly, yeah, to have your hands in as many pots as possible. That's the best yeah. best route to go. And it's like, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm, I'll make sure that you're the same way, but if we were to stick to one thing and keep doing it over and over again, it's just the way my brain works. I, I yeah, I, it makes me miserable. Like I, I lose the, I lose interest in it. And that's kind of like what was happening with magic. And I love magic so much. I love card throwing so much, but it was like just the constant of only doing that uh, was making me hate it. And yeah. it's like, and that's something And like, that's kind of why I took a break from posting on YouTube and stuff. Luckily the gaming thing took off, but that's kind of like the struggle I've been having recently. And like, um, just not being able to create new content for magic and stuff. It's all been gaming. Cause Gaming, the whole gaming thing, like consume my life. And so it's just finding the time to do that. And on top of like, you know, take care of the house, take care of the dog, take, you know, so like there's a lot of responsibility and like trying to, trying, trying to like manage my time has been a, has been a yeah. hard one. Yeah. I definitely feel the same way. I'm just like having twin. a bunch of different interests <laughs> and trying to, yeah, Literally it's, it's every tough. Report, every report card was like, Ryan has trouble staying on task. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah there's exactly. Stuff to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But honestly, no, I get that. I've got a couple dogs, and you know, well, Blaze will tell you my pergola now is like the pergola. He had, dude. Dog. He is, yeah. I remember I was there. I heard it. Oh yeah, yeah. You haven't seen the latest photos. His pergola is significantly yeah, nicer than my last apartment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show you just because. The other day, Brian yeah. was talking about triangulating his pergola, and I was like, I've never heard anyone put those words together in that kind of <laughs> sentence before. <laughs> this is way too advanced. So, Nick, uh, yeah, I definitely get what you're talking about. Oh yeah, he's showing his pergola. Jeez. He's got a projector, dude. Oh my god! I'm mounting the projector from up top, so I get like the fire table and. Oh, uh, it's so dope. Built a couple like six by six couches and stuff. That's uh, so cool. So. I love that uh, stuff. Eventually, Magic After Dark will be broadcast from the pergola. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. That's so cool, though. That's. Yeah, so I told dope. him. I told him soon he's never gonna leave. He's just yeah. gonna only be in the pergola. Mm -hmm. I time. bought a pizza oven, so I got a pizza oven there. I got the there barbecue you go. there. You never have to go. leave. You know, you just you gotta install to a leave. toilet and you'll be good to go. That's it. Oh, I'm, I could be like the dog and just crap in the backyard. Exactly. That's what I do. Done. Done. Um, <laughs> well, should we hit him up with one of our crazy? I, I, I think we questions? I think we should. I just had one quick question on that because yeah, yeah. I definitely I definitely feel what you're talking about, Nick, with just like being into a bunch of different things and trying to figure out like what is the what is the priority that I should stick with right now? Because there's a million different like directions that I that I'd like to go in, but you can't do them all at the same time. Um, do you when you were talking about with like how sticking to one thing ends up getting really boring and really tough because then it just becomes work. Like you're trying to drudge through doing that thing that you used to be really exciting. Do yeah. you find with the gaming content that you're doing now that because you can just like do a different game that it has more of that variety or have you felt that kind of level of burnout with the gaming? You know, I'm just curious on, on that. And then I'd like to get into the, the, the real questions. Um, I, like the gaming thing. I mean, I mean that's a good question. Uh, uh, the gaming thing, it definitely helps with ha like being able to play different games and try different things. Uh, but the gaming thing is like its own very unique situation, like by itself. Um, that thing, it was kind of like, not saying it was forced on me, but like the gaming thing was kind of like my only option, kind of. Um, and to like elaborate on that is because when I moved to Vegas, um, I moved to Vegas for the show. Um, and I moved I moved to Vegas to work on a show. And um, it ended up getting shut down, obviously, because of COVID. Um, and that happened two weeks after I signed my lease to live there for, you know, for the year. And this is the first time I moved out of my house, out of my parents' house. This is, I moved across the entire country. So I was, you know, in Las Vegas, three, you know, 3,000 miles away from my family. And I signed a lease. And then my only source of income shuts down. So I was like, oh, I was like, this sucks. So uh, I kind of like, and I had some saved up, like, an, like enough to be like, okay, I need to pursue something right now and grind at it as hard as I can to make it my job. Um, and luckily I was like, I was like, you know, and, and like, that's kind of like, it helps me. Like if it was like, if I wasn't in that position, I don't think I would have gone as far as I did with the gaming thing. Mm. It was kind of like, 
you need to do this and you know just to sort of like survival instinct kicked in it's like you got to do this and make this work or you're not gonna you, you know you're gonna have to move home or you're gonna have to you know figure figure it out so i kind of like it forced me to post a lot it forced me to like reach out to brands it forced me to really like work my you know work my butt off to turn the gaming thing into my job so that's kind of like how that thing came about um so i was kind of like forced you know like i had to love it and like which i did like it kind of like, it was weird it was like a different situation that i've ever been like put in or had to deal with so that's it still is like I, i'm not not forced to do it anymore but it's it's just it became like my passion yeah nice nice now do you have a uh this is just a stupid question but do you have a favorite game like are you like like for me i gotta play call of duty right it's like mm. okay call of duty that's it well i almost like i'll buy the new one and i never play the solo like mission it's just straight to multiplayer right? yeah straight to multiplayer like, um do they have a <laughs> single player i'll go straight to multiplayer or straight to zombies if it was one of the trailer yeah, games 100 mm -hmm. that's it right and that's all yeah. the game ever sees like I think I played like the new one. I think I might have played the first like story segment, and then that's it. It's like no, it's yeah. I, it, it, like the the uh, the gaming thing. I'm the same way with gaming that I am with all the hobbies. I am ever like always transferring games, especially now that I got a PC. So there's like all these games that you could download for you know for free, and all these different games you yeah. could try. So I've been transferring from game to game to game, and that's the good thing about like my content is my content doesn't focus on. I'm not I'm not gaming. I'm kind of just creating skits based on gaming. And most of my skits are for COD because I, you know, I, 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 you know, I grew up on COD and um, yeah, like it's weird. Like COD was one of the games where like I kind of it kind of like I got bored of because I, I was doing that for a job. I was playing COD and then I kind of like started transferring my content into playing other games. But um, yeah, I, I kind of like I don't necessarily play COD anymore, but I'm playing like a new game every week just because I get distracted easy. Yeah, mm. crazy, crazy. So, so it's it's less of like a it's less of like a shroud kind of like grind of like I'm just gonna get the highest level on this one game and just be the best at this one game. It's more like I'm just gonna like be entertaining to watch at playing whatever game. That's that the is. thing, like you know, and everybody asks like, oh, like what do you know? What game you play? And like, are you good at like? I'm terrible. I'm awful at gaming. Like <laughs> really, really bad. Like it's 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 like surprising how bad I am. But. uh and That's the main awesome. thing I say is I'm a comedy gamer, not a good one. Like I'm, I'm there to just entertain. Like I'm not trying to be the best. I'm not trying to grind and, and, and be the best at the game that I'm playing. I'm just trying to hang out, have a good time and make people laugh. So that's kind of like the best way to describe my content. Yeah. Nice. I, and that's the thing, like I figured, you know, you see, I got a bunch of buddies that are like hardcore gamers. And, uh, you know, when Xbox and PlayStation came out, I had the Xbox like day one release and stuff. And when the la when Xbox One and PS4 came out, I had both of them day one release. Uh, and then they just sit there. Like I I eventually sold my PS4 like three months later because I it just sat. It was a, basically a paperweight. I played it like four or five times because a bunch of buddies had Xbox, so I played Xbox more. But, yeah. Uh, you said you're a PC guy, and so, but I always thought like I see a bunch of kids that I know like watching gamers play games, and I always imagine that they are watching those guys because they are so good. But it's interesting to say that you're like I'm terrible at these games. Really, like, really bad. It's like caught. I was <laughs> ticked because it's like you know, I'm a 35 year old man getting my butt handed to me by like a 12 year old on clock. Uh, it's it's tough like that's the thing like back then you know i, I you know i i used to play on the xbox 360 i used to play on the xbox um and it was just a different sort of gaming experience back then it was like everybody sorry i'm trying to get focused hello okay there we go nope hello it, it'll, it'll eventually oh, happen can, <laughs> can you hear me funny? now can you see me now <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no like back then it was like uh it, it was kind of like a different experience with gaming. And I've noticed like now it's so much more competitive and it's just yeah. the way it is. It's very weird. And I think it's due to like the skill-based matchmaking and stuff mm -hmm. that's in the gaming. But um, yeah, I know I just, you know, back then we played to have fun and now everybody plays to be the best. And it's like, I'm trying to make gaming fun again because I feel like a lot of people have dropped off of the gaming because it's just extremely competitive now, which is a good thing for some people. But for me, you know, uh, we, we all have stressful lives and we want to hop on video games and hang out and not have to sweat to death and you know drink a gallon of water just to be able to compete so yeah um yeah just trying to make it fun well it's crazy yeah. now like 
the world of gaming and competitive gaming has become crazy. Like I was watching the hockey game last night and when TSN or Sportsnet shows like a commercial for like the world championship of, you know, NHL 21. And they're like, get your all-star teams together now and enter. And I'm like, this has never happened where like an actual sports station is like, Hey, yeah. We're going to start advertising you guys playing video games as yeah. a sport, right? So it, yeah. it's becoming like a massive. I mean, it's already massive, but it uh, it's just becoming like esports is huge, especially with like yeah. league. It's like insane yeah. the prize pools. Like I can't, I can't believe how much money well, these these esports players are getting. I remember hearing about the one kid that won. He was like 15 or something, and his mom threw out his Xbox, and he like <laughs> lost it, uh, and then he entered like a Fortnite contest or like yeah. and he won and he won like millions of dollars mm -hmm. and now he owns his house <laughs> he bought a new so house nuts. And, like, so and like you know what does the mom do then right like that kid yeah. just made more than you've probably made in your lifetime uh playing a video game right so yeah. i mean yeah. and, and like i i really didn't have like I was like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, I guess it's a sport. I guess it's a sport. And then it really opened my eyes because I joined um, I, I joined a content creation team. It's called Full Squad Gaming. And um, and they're a branch off of NRG, and NRG is an esports team. And they have a facility, and you know, we went there to create content, but I saw them practicing. And it was like a major eye-opener because I didn't realize how much of a sport it actually is. Like these guys were getting there super early in the morning, Get, get getting on getting on overwatch playing like nonstop. then they would stand up go into a separate room the coach would then they would break down footage from other teams and they would say okay this player does this place then they would go back and practice again the coach would walk around and yell at them based on what they're doing they would go and they would watch more film they would go and they would practice and then they would scrimmage it was insane it was the coolest thing to see because you didn't i didn't realize it was like that in depth of a sport yeah, that's intense wow. I, mean, yeah. I mean both of us are used to like you know, working out and, and, you know, hitting the weights and getting in shape. And that's tough work. But yeah. I never have thought, like, uh, esports, like, oh, this guy, like, let's break down what this player does and stuff exactly. like actually playing sports. Yeah, again, it's yeah, like I'm, literally I'm, yeah. like playing football and, like, the coach, like, going yeah. to play, like, a no. playbook. Like, that's exactly. Like, again, that's, like, again, I lived it with wrestling. Like, anytime we would go against another school is we would sit and we would watch film. We would break down, okay, this guy leads with this leg. This guy shoots, you know, he shoots, a, a, you know, a single on this side. He does this. And it's, like, it was the exact same thing, but with – like it was just crazy like to see like okay on this map this guy always pushes this side and he's always using this power up and he's it's just it's really wild it's nuts to see crazy so i know that you're would you say your main platform nowadays has kind of transitioned over to tiktok is like the main mm -hmm. the main focus but before yeah. that it was youtube and i know that you've done twitch streaming but i, I like i i'd say that like your main thing is making skits about the gaming rather than just having it be you like playing the game but yeah, i know exactly. like nowadays especially with among us and rust and like gta roleplay and everything it's like seems like there's kind of this collab meta that's happening online where like it's all about just collabing with people and i guess that's made it a little bit less competitive you know in content creation for twitch is like oh you know it's more about just having a fun time with your friends whether that's playing among us or rust or whatever do you i know with TikTok, you're kind of doing your own thing making the skits but are you involved in that a lot with like the where a lot of your content is about collabing with other people uh yeah i, I mean like recently it's definitely been that especially like just because i started content creation within you know covid um and it's and it's it's tough to collab with people especially on my content it's not like we could join into a game together and play it's like more of like i would have to be in person to collab so i haven't essentially done many many collabs but recently since i was able to like go to la and go to this content creation castle you know for the team that i joined i was able to meet a couple other content creators and that's definitely opened up the door to like being able to collab but i definitely feel like uh, it's definitely less competitive online, especially on TikTok and stuff. I mean, there are, you know, there are some people, you know, you get those types of people who are, who are just very, very strict with it or very competitive and don't want to talk to anybody and just trying to do their own thing, which I get. But um, yeah, it's definitely been like a, a much, uh, it's, I don't know, it's been better than, than it's, it's not what you would expect in the gaming. Cause you, you know, like me, I expected the same thing of like being extremely competitive 
nobody, you know, everybody's trying to be the best, but there is a lot of people who are just trying to have fun and have a good time. So we have some questions. <clears throat> so, so should uh, we get into the serious questions, Ryan? Yeah, I, I think so. I think and by fun. serious, I mean not the rapid fire ones. The serious. No, yeah, not the rapid yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So question one. Would you rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? Well, it depends. What does a potato feel like? I mean, so, yeah. that's that's in the um, eye of the beholder, sir. That's, uh, <laughs> I guess I would rather look like a potato hmm, than to feel right? like one. I feel like I would because I, I feel like if you would feel like a potato, I feel like that's like very uh, not good. So I feel like if I would look <laughs> like one, I could still be myself and still do all everything that I love. But do I have arms? I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, you look like one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But okay. I guess you 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 feel yeah. like yourself. You know? Yeah, so I, feel like I guess. Myself. I guess would you even notice that you looked like a potato if you still felt like yourself? You know. You're so you, are, you, are you saying I look like a potato now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Nick, I'm sorry to break it to I mean, Blaise, you. I, I, I know I put on a little quarantine weight. You don't have to, don't have to bring it out in front of. I'll just say you don't look like Ryan anymore. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say anything else. <laughs> All right, would you like to hit him with another question? Uh, yeah, all right. Let's uh, wait. Should I do the life changing question right now? You think that's oh, yeah, good? dude. Let's let's get into the life changing question. Okay, so Nick, this is a serious question. Okay, this one changed my life. It, this had changed my life as well years ago when I got asked this question, and so I thought so. This came up randomly last night. So, uh, so Nick, do you wash your hands before or after you go to the bathroom? After. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Why? Well, do you um, want me to change your uh, change your whole thought process right now? Okay. So, have you considered the opposite? Have you ever yeah, considered no. going the other no. way? And most people haven't. And every viewer right now watching is going, "No, this doesn't even make sense." But hear me out. You probably took a shower in the morning, or you know, before your day started. So your body is clean, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you go throughout the day touching everything that's dirty. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. When you go to the bathroom, you then touch yourself, your clean body, with your dirty hands. Oh, right? I see where you're getting at here. Yeah. So now you're making your clean body <laughs> dirty by having nasty hands, potentially nasty hands. He's especially with COVID, like, you don't know what you touched, right? And so technically washing your hands after you've only just touched a clean body part. Huh. <laughs> Xavier said that theory is flawed. <laughs> said that theory is flawed. Oh. He also asked, he said, that makes zero sense. Yeah. He asked, do you wipe your ass before or after the horror? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that makes sense because you're, when you take shit, you're, you're then becoming dirty. But if you were standing at a urinal, right, essentially you are only touching yourself, which yeah. technically is clean, but you're touching it with your dirty hands, right? That's true. But, no, I, I, I just feel like, I guess it's like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I definitely don't fondle myself when I use the bathroom. So. <laughs> I told um, you, Ryan, Zoomer minded. Yeah, Zoom yeah. reminded, we d we got our phone in one hand, we pulled down our pants with the other hand. There's no contact. I actually so I, I actually pulled down my pants with telekinesis, so I don't even <laughs> touch it. I don't even wash my hands. I never wash my hands. My big thing was maybe just wash before and after. Like exactly. I, I always just wash my hands after as well. But when I heard the guy say it, I was like, he's like, you touch yourself with dirty hands? And I was like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you go throughout the entire day touching things and then you go to the bathroom, your hands are dirty, right? I want to know what that guy does though. Did he say that yeah. he washes his hands before he uses the bathroom? Because then you don't want to yeah. shake his hand because then he's got pee-pee hands. <laughs> he does have pee-pee hands. I, I agree. You should definitely wash them after as well. You don't want to <laughs> like, X, says, X says by the end of the day, you are, quote, a cesspool of disgust and it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said oh, wash before and after, but I think it's life changing to go like, uh, you know, we've never thought about that, right? Like, because yeah, that is kind of strange. When like you go yeah. to the bathroom, you wash your hands, 
Yeah. And I remember working on a TV show and there was, um, we we're at a camp. And so there was like a, a washroom, like a guy's washroom and it had a ton of stalls and stuff. And one of the actors like went to the bathroom and then didn't wash his hands. And so me and the other guy that was the actor, I was the art director on the show. And we were like, you know, he didn't, he didn't wash his hands. <laughs> like, like we we're at lunch and we're like, uh, you know, that, that bowl of chips is just yours, bro. <laughs> like, but he, but he had the same kind of comeback. He's like, well, I washed myself this morning, so I'm clean. <laughs> and I, but you know, I don't agree with that either. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. But, but I just, we just thought it was a kind of a, a weird question that you would never think about because uh, we touch yeah. things all the time. We'd never wash our hands before we go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you just got to put like hand sanitizer on your belt or something. So like you can like squeeze it out in your hand. <laughs> yeah. then you're in the bathroom. <laughs> and just give it like 30 seconds in between. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because X, X said, because, you know, you're sweating and everything's in a dark, damp space, breeding bacteria. I just assume that X hasn't, you know, gotten the, the highest technology, you know, yet. You, know, like, you, don't, you don't have a greenhouse in your underwear. <laughs> I thought so, we all I mean, Honestly, okay, wait, just think about it. When you walk into the bathroom, there's never an exit. So it's never, if, if you think about it, you don't walk in, then it's bathroom, sink, and then exit. It's you have to walk yeah. past the sink and then past the sink again on the way out. So maybe we're supposed to be washing our hands. Before it's, we use the bathroom. Wow. Yeah. Just, and I, and I, I, I will say that I think that the guy that told you that, Ryan, he said that he washes before and after. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, he's just, he's just, you know, a crazy person. Uh, yeah, so he, was, he was just like, I like to be very clean and stuff, but I had mm -hmm. never, ever thought about washing my hands with, like unless my hands like if i was out working and my hands were gross but he's like well on an everyday basis like you're touching everything right i guess so. but i mean the same the same thing could be said about his phone screen this is his phone screen is probably more dirty than the toilet you know isn't that like yeah. a fact or something isn't your phone screen like more dirty than like a toilet oh yeah Got more bacteria on it cedric lancy says you don't wash your hands before you use the restroom why <laughs> <laughs> it's like well i think that's what we're saying that's what we're saying <laughs> Cedric, that's what we're you saying do yeah do before and after and mike yes you are uh, i think you're correct wash hands after poops definitely <laughs> definitely he's onto yeah. something there <laughs> i think yeah, that's, you're a, onto something. That's, a, that's a given that is a given like you gotta you sasha, gotta sasha said uh, a good point nick covid bathrooms there should be two doors also, I'll say, uh, Ryan, I know that washroom is just the Canadian way of saying bathroom, but I just imagine a bunch of dudes with like loofahs why washing each other. <laughs> washing each other. <laughs> it's like, well, oh, can you get my back, bro? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, eh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, said, I don't see this. I see one of my hands before I sit on the. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Uh, Only, uh, Only X. All right. So <laughs> I went downhill real fast. We shouldn't have asked while X is still on. He's gonna just call us up afterwards. Like you guys are spreading some serious false information. <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> endanger people's health. What are you doing, <laughs> dude? We just start the next virus. Yeah. <laughs> This is COVID 2.0, started uh, by Magic After Dark. Uh, <laughs> all came from washing your hands. All right. There. So if anybody has any questions for Nick, please put them in uh, in the YouTube chat, and we will make sure to, to see him, to check him out, and ask uh, anything that you want to know. Oh, we never got to the question, though. Um, the, the one person asked when it came to the card throwing about, you know, if those, uh, if those thicker cards that you're talking about hurt you know, when you, when you get hit with them. And also, have you ever ricocheted a card and hit yourself in the face? All the time. I do that all the time. I always hit myself in the face. Um, mostly I hit more my friends in the face other than myself. But, um, yeah, the, the, you know, the thicker cards, it's like throwing a credit card. So it's like it's, it's definitely going to hurt more than throwing a normal playing card. But I feel like you're going to get cut more with a normal playing card than if you were to throw a thicker card. Yeah, mm. sharper edges. Here's a question that came in as well. It said, Nick, for those of us that don't follow you yet, uh, can you give us a sales pitch for your channel? <laughs> well, I got two uh, channels. Oh, and then it says ShamWow style. 
Sham Oh man, I don't You're know. You're gonna love my that. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that? Have you oh, seen that commercial? I haven't. Seen that just made it ten times more funnier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, the, it's, the best part, no, the best part is the sticky when he goes, "Is your pussy shedding?" Um, and then the cat walks. By. Like it's such a cool commercial. No, it's oh, it's no. the so oh, the sham wow guy also did the commercial for the slap chop. The slap chop. And yeah. so he's he, it's this thing where you just slap stuff and it yeah. chops it up. Chops so it up. He just he just throws in some walnuts and he's like, "You're gonna love my nuts." <laughs> <laughs> so that guy was actually like arrested. Uh, yeah. for, oh my god beating up a, a woman, uh, a woman of the night, uh, and was like put in jail. And so one of his other commercials that he's on now, it has like a scene of him in jail, like in jail. <laughs> like he just totally makes fun of the whole situation. He, he um, you know, if we're thinking of the same guy, um, he kind of like, he could be like Johnny Knoxville's brother. I feel like they look yeah, the yeah. same, right? Oh yeah, they yeah, could, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they look very similar. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my sales pitch. <laughs> Not more than that. Sham Wow, but uh, um, yeah, I basically yeah. just create content. Uh, I used to be, well, I still am uh, a card thrower magician. Um, I don't post as much on my card throwing and magic page anymore. I'm Nick Seriano on YouTube and Nick Seriano on Instagram. Um, but I mostly focus on TikTok. Um, I have a dope fan base of uh, 950,000 people and they're very cool and they're nice to me and i post gaming content skits and all that good stuff so if you're into gaming definitely give me a follow and uh and yeah i'm a i'm a comedy gamer not a good one and um i'm there uh my name is nick Knight on tiktok nick Knight on instagram nick Knight on youtube so if you're looking to laugh and have a good time come check me out former Ooh. magician nick Surya. <laughs> that's why my name is nick Knight, though because I started my channel because I was still going to continue the the magic. And I was like, magician by day, gamer by night. It's Nick's night because uh, it's my night. Nice. night. Uh, um, so. And ladies and gentlemen, if you watch his channel, you're going to love his nuts. That's it. <laughs> love his nuts. nuts. Come, come love my nuts. <laughs> uh, Dude, that would be an interesting <laughs> be an interesting TikTok of just like <laughs> the sham wow guy playing God. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there would be oh yeah just i can imagine how downhill that would go real quick <laughs> yeah uh there would be lots of jail references i'm sure playing cod uh mm -hmm. but uh do we have uh any of nick's videos that uh um, yes sir so i okay i yeah. thought that it would be fun to pull up the uh -oh. winter knock trailer uh -oh. because I but do you feel like another trailer would be a better representation of uh, of you know what you do when it comes to filmmaking? No, because I mean, that's, that's a totally terrible. different side of you than the gaming side. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, you know the Winter Knox is like definitely one of the one of the 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 main ones that like I, I'm the most proud of. I feel like I put like a lot of my heart into that one. And I'd love to. I'd love for you to talk about the mountain in that as well. Yeah, the work that that oh, took. That goddamn so, mountain. So let's bring it up. Uh, I think that while this is playing, we'll all end up being muted. But uh, everybody that hasn't seen the Winter Knock trailer, here it goes. We settled on two. You. Yep. I don't think you realize how hard it is to get these pelts from my camp to here, especially with all the run-ins with the natives. Wouldn't hurt to show a little bit more appreciation. 
Well, probably gonna head out of here, go down the river a bit, set up a camp, maybe get out of this cold a little bit. I suggest you do the same. Now, you don't talk too much. All right, well, enjoy the pelts. I'm sure you won't. I'll enjoy these decks. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, Stay safe. I know I will. That was really epic. That was so <laughs> dope. Thanks, guys. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, you forget that it was <laughs> to advertise a deck of cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But what uh, Netflix show is this? Like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, hang on at the end, he pulls out the deck of cards. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's always great. Oh, man. That was yeah, so it, cool, man. Those. Those trailers were like my excuse to finally. Uh, it was one of those things where, like, I had, like being a filmmaker, and and that's it's what I love to do. Is just it was my my you know my excuse to finally get a budget and finally get paid to just make something cool. And like that's yeah. why like, um you know that's why Alex like me and Alex vibe together so much is because like he also gave me the creative freedom and he gave me the budget that I needed. And it was kind of like, you know, and he saw it and he let me know, like he let me run with the ideas and he let me run with and, and you know, and it was a very good collaborative effort and we went back and forth and we talked to each other and we came up with these cool stories and then it went, you know, he was kind of like, just to, you know, just do what you do and, and, you know, make it cool. And, uh, and it definitely was a cool, you know, it was, it was cool to finally be able to, cause you know, working on projects with other people, it's kind of just like, you know, they want all hands on and they really need to control everything. And it's kind of like Alex trusted my vision and was like, mm -hmm. okay, let's, you know, let's make something dope together. And, and it, it's just, it was, it was, it was cool. It was, it was, a fun, it was, it like allowed me to like pay people to make something, you know, pay my actors come in and really make something really cool. And it's like what I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, those, those, those trails are always so much fun to make. They really are a blast. It's like a week long of filming and, just getting everybody together and uh and yeah that the that winter knock one is probably one of the hardest ones just because location wise like alex really wanted it to really wanted it to be in snow because obviously it's the winter knocks yeah. so he was like he really wanted it to be snowy and we drove upstate and we see you know and we got you know we got a hotel we stayed upstate and we were, we were driving around trying to find snow and unfortunately the weather just was not putting up and 
we weren't getting any snow and the snow was melting because we drove upstate. We're like, oh, we'll just go upstate and keep driving until <laughs> we find snow. There was no snow and it melted and we couldn't find places to film. We had to drive back. It was, it was miserable and we had to make the costumes and it was cold. And luckily there's just one spot that I've always used to film when I was little and it was that creek. And it was like right by my house, it's in the woods. And I was like, oh, I was like, you know, screw it. I'm going to CGI a mountain in the background. I was like, we'll just do that. Yeah. So then, that mountain that looked super hyper realistic that you also had to like track for any kind of moving shots or whatever is like, I'll, I'll just do this so people can see. This mountain is all fake. Yeah. And Nick made that. Yeah, that was a, that was a pain. That was, that was a real, real pain. Just because that there wasn't a pain. That was an easy, because it's an easy effect and after effects, you take that mountain, drop the opacity of it. You basically could just like remove the white of the scene. And since it's overexposed, you could throw that mountain in there. I just added a quick reflection. That's the easy one. The hard one was when we were talking throughout that whole talking back and forth scene, the camera's doing this the whole time. Yeah. And in that scene, I had to then track the mountain into that scene as the camera's going back and forth and the blur. And it's just, there's no tracking points. Cause obviously when you're tracking and you know, an editing software, you need tracking points to be able to track the mountain. And as the scene's moving like that, yeah. so <laughs> that yeah. Right so there. I had to just constantly manually go in frame by frame and line it up and just make sure it looked good. And, and that was, that was the hardest part of the whole trailer is getting that mountain and to look good. Oh my God. That was such, and then adding the reflection too. Cause then I was like, okay, the mountain's done. And then I was like, oh, there's no reflection of the mountain. So, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I hate thinking about it. <laughs> because there because there was no snow so the only thing that really made it winter was you cgiing that that snowy mountain in exactly yeah. so if but we didn't have that there. it was you know that, that was the only downside is like because i was at a point where i was like just scrap the mountain but then it was like without the mountain it's not the you know the, the, the mountains on the deck of cards like we need to have that in the trailer yeah so it was such pain but this was the, the, the this was one of my most favorite things to make uh, knock wise, just because the costuming was fun. We spent weeks on the costuming and obviously a big inspiration. And you was you made the, the costume. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I worked and made all the costumes and everything. And that's like another one of my passions is prop making and, you know, filmmaking anything with movies. So uh, this was kind of like allowed me to like have my creative freedom and um, yeah. And then oh, also like I was watching and I forgot uh, first of all, the whole finding sequence was miserable to make because it was just like me and my buddy Max. So Max was the other actor in it. Um, super cool. He's never acted before or anything, but uh, he was the only one with like a long mustache. And like I grew up my mustache for that. And like, because it was like, you know, I was a revenant. Everybody used to look grungy. And Max was the only one with the long mustache. So I was like, hey, you want to be in this film? <laughs> He's like, yeah, let's do it. And then I ended up punching him in the face. So that shot that you see in the trailer of me punching Max, I punched him in the face and gave him a two, two bloody noses. Nice. <laughs> so, and like, I've never done that before. Cause like normally we're good on set, but just like, it was really like, I, it was things going on and I, I freaking wailed them right, right in the face. Straight Merkin people. Whoa. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I punched him. I punched him right in the face there. Yeah. So I felt, I felt so bad, but, uh, awesome. but yeah, that, that was a, that was a really fun one to make. Man, so here's the question for you, because I feel like, again, I feel like we're kind of the same way. Uh, I speak at a lot of places, and sometimes people will put you in a box and be like, okay, uh, they need a full manuscript of exactly what I'm going to say. And I'm like, this is the worst, right? And I feel like with filmmaking, it's the same Or Like, even when I was art directing for some TV shows and stuff, it's like, okay, we want it to look exactly like this. Here is the photo. Here's everything. Instead of going, here's the idea, run with it, right? Do you find it a lot harder when someone kind of puts you in a box? Or is it kind of like, oh, okay, all I have to do is this, you know, instead of yeah. letting your imagination go wild and, and creating whatever you want to create? Um, I think there's definitely a spot for each of those things. Um, just because when you're put in a box, it feels like a job when you're not put in a box, it feels like a passion. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, with those trailers, it's nice being able to be like, you know, when, when Alex is like, here's the idea, this is the way we want to go with it. And then we talk back and forth and then he kind of, you know, trusts me to, you know, you know, put something out and, um, it definitely, you know, it, 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 it just helps him. It, it helps me be, you know, more passionate about the project. It helps me run with it more. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's just like, and like, that's a, that's, that's a lot of the reason why a lot of us, you know, you know, a lot of people create content on YouTube, create content on TikTok, is because my main passion was to become a director, you know, direct some sort of movie or something. And the more I was on set and the more that I was working on projects on, on a set, it was the more I realized I didn't, I, I, didn't, I hated it. Like it was, so when I, it was like a, it was like one of those passions that I was, it, it, it broke me inside to, to be like, Oh my God, I actually hate this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Cause then I went on set and you, and there's a thousand people you have to go through. You have to go through each of these people to have this idea approved. And then you have to do it this certain way and plan it out. And this person's telling you what to do. This person's telling you what, so it's nice to be able to have those, you know, these projects and, and have my own content where I could be the director, I'm the writer, I'm the editor, I'm the, you know, the filmer, I'm the cinematographer. It's, yeah. um, it's nice to have all those roles. I remember the same feeling the first time I was working on a set and I asked someone, I was building everything for the, for the show. And then uh, because it was up in this like woods cabin thing, I was the only one that knew the area because I had been up there for a couple of weeks building everything. And so they said, would you be the site manager for the whole show? And I was like, yeah, okay, just keep working. It's good. Um, and I would be like, hey, man, can you do this for me? Like, can you grab something for me or whatever? And they're like, no, I'm unionized uh, or whatever. I, my job is only to drive the talent from here to here. And I'm like, yeah, but there's like garbage on the floor. Can you just like pick it up? Yeah, no. Nope. We have someone else to do that. And I'm oh, like, yeah. wow. Like, I hated it. I was mm -hmm. like, well, you people are, and, and for me, I'm almost like attacking the person. I'm like, you're such a lazy person. Yeah. Like, why do you suck? <laughs> like, why do you <laughs> suck? Garbage? Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's like, them, dude, I, I get it. They're like, no, no, this is, uh, you know, this has to be this way and, and stuff. Like, this is all we're paid to do. And yeah. Same, like, you know, same with, I, I was talking to Blaze the other night, and we were talking about Fool Us, and I said, I wanted to put a, a glass of wine behind the table in case Penn brought up something. And uh, so I said to them, like, the day of the show, I was like, hey, do you mind if I just grab a glass of wine to put behind the table? Oh, it was like you know all hell broke loose it was like we need to get permission we gotta ask this person we gotta do this where are we gonna get the glass of wine i was like i could just go to the restaurant and grab or the bar and grab a glass of wine like it's not a huge deal like i let me just take care of it but in those circumstances you can't right yeah, yeah. i know the data it's like yeah like there you know there's somebody who's who has to turn on the light and then there's somebody who has to hold the light and then there's somebody who has to watch the plug to make sure the plug doesn't get pulled out of the wall yeah. to make sure the light doesn't go off and then there's somebody who's checking the heat of the light. I was like, this is insane. I was like, oh, so yeah. many people to do one thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's like when you're it. filming your own video, you can just plug it in, put it here. <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, that doesn't look good. Let me move it. Like, <laughs> I know. That's a tough yeah. thing too, like in the States. I think I feel like the unionized stuff happens more on shows in the states like over here we do some shows like i worked on one show where they were like we don't want any unionized workers um and and that was amazing no immunized workers yeah, no, <laughs> no immunized. vaccines in these streets uh, but uh but like in the states i got hired to be um a consultant on a show and i was supposed to build the illusions for the show and so they brought me down i designed all the illusions and um, you know, then all of a sudden the first week they're like, well, you're not unionized. So you're not allowed in the shop. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to build an illusion? Like, this is why I'm getting paid for uh, if I can't even get in the shop. And they're like, well, you're going to have to buy your own tools, uh, and stuff. And I was like, what? Like, I'm not going so to spend ridiculous. thousands of dollars so, at like yeah. Home Depot to like leave it all yeah. in there and stuff. It is nuts. So, so, so dumb. It took about three weeks of the show of the people that were supposed to be building the stuff, just doing a horrendously bad job and it like failing every time before they were like, okay, you know how to build it, just build it. Uh, yep. So it was like, you can come in after hours <laughs> and like, I was the only one that was non-unionized that ended up getting like free reign of the whole studio and stuff. Cause yeah, that's great. It was, uh, yeah. It, it works out. Yeah. But, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, so that's why social media is great. You're yeah, you yeah, control of everything. Yeah, uh, I like Butter Suckin says that uh, he thought I was from Southern Ontario, and then after you said it, they were like, "Freaking knew he was Canadian." Yeah, 
I uh, I am from Southern Ontario, from uh, like an hour outside Toronto. And oh, wow. Picked up the accent real quick. Yeah. It's freaking Canadians. <laughs> freaking. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> uh, he's he said that he's in Brampton. Oh, Brampton. Okay, nice. Nice. Uh, I used to do a show in Vaughn every single uh, four shows a week out there. So uh, close to close to Brampton. Canadian. Uh, well, should yeah. we uh, should we run Nick through the uh, the twenty questions? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, first I want to ask him what his favorite genre of lasagna is. Oh yeah, that's a good. We, What's we your favorite gotta, genre of lasagna, we, Nick? We gotta make a slide for this one. We do need to make a slide for this one. I right, listen. I'm not even gonna try and attempt that. The question. What's my favorite genre of las of lasagna? Yeah, lasagna. Sweet, I, can't even, I can't even say la lasagna. Like lasagna genre. <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> lasagna? <laughs> like lasagna genre. That's a tough thing. To Man, say, this yeah. is a serious question, dude. We have it yeah. in our serious cues list. Oh, this is sure. a weekly question that every. This is a question we ask every single guest. Ask. Oh so. man, um, lasagn uh, lasagna. 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 Now, now, as a follow-up question, if you bake a lasagna and you stack a second one on top of it, how many lasagnas do you have now? One or two? Oh my god, probably one. One, one lasagna. big lasagna. Yeah. Definitely you one big, like one big lasagna. I like your style. I like your here, style. Or I've got a white, a blackboard here, like a a black glass whiteboard thing here. Mm -hmm. We've just got a bunch of equations on it and it just all leads back to lasagna. I do, no, it's, yeah. uh, it's a, it's a, it's a chalkboard. And then at the end of the, at the end of every podcast, you turn it around and it has all the answers that the member, the, the person said, it's like oh, a reveal. We should go back <laughs> through the previous episodes. And then we just yeah. give every, every guest <laughs> answer. Yeah. Uh, now, nah, yeah, that's no, that's a good answer. I think one, one lasagna is good. Yeah um now yeah let's get into the the 20 questions all right so yeah. we'll have we'll have this be uh be time so let me pull up a uh a timer oh boy. so it's gonna be rapid fire nick uh first oh, no. thing that comes to your mind uh as fast as you can so we're oh, gonna give no, should we give two minutes total for yeah yeah two minutes all right. two minutes uh two zero zero okay two minutes and let's uh let's okay, do this i'll, move, I'll start see. the first one and then uh you follow by okay yeah because we have the same list so we can yeah all right how ready? many questions are there let me switch it's, over uh, to... it's it's 20 questions we're gonna see how many questions you can get through oh right. boy you get intense face on you right. here here we go all right. are you ready go. i'm ready right. okay and oh man go favorite color blue biggest pet peeve uh it, licking fingers after eating. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, New Jersey. What always makes you laugh? Uh, funny gaming videos. <laughs> secret talent. Um, card throwing. <laughs> I guess it's not a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Uh, I can play guitar a little bit. Uh, what's the first time you ever saw a magic trick? Uh, my grandpa. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, to shoot spidey webs. Uh, what's a dream setting for one of your videos? Uh, Jamaica. <laughs> Most cherished moment or memory. Most cherished Most memory. Cherished memory. Uh, probably the content creation houses that we do, the magicians. Mm. What's your favorite food? Uh, burgers. Favorite movie? No Country for Old Men. Favorite pizza topping? Uh, sausage. No pineapple. No pineapple. Favorite magician. Oh my god! I've never been asked this. Uh, Thurston. Really? Okay. If you if you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? Uh, a house for my parents. Nice. Uh, what's your most highly recommended magic product or book? Uh, I've been using, wow, uh, I've been using Toxic Plus a lot recently, mm. so that's kind of super dope. I recommend that. What's your favorite TV show? Oh, my God. Big Trick Energy, of course. <laughs> A guilty pleasure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn, I don't know. This is you a hard one. I, yeah, you yeah. broke me at that one. 
like two seconds left. All right, <laughs> you made it through. Nice. All right, you made it through. You're 16 on, questions. You're on Damn. Question 17, 16 yeah. questions. And considering you're the first person on YouTube, you have the high score. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I would like to thank my parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you give us a speech on this? <laughs> no, buying your parents a house was a very it was a very nice uh, That was a very nice uh, gesture. Yeah. yeah thanks, Especially guys. for the first thing off the top of your head. That, that yeah. means it's legit. <laughs> Yeah. That's the that's the goal. That's the There's goal no time to lie when you when you go into red <laughs> face. Yeah, I don't know. It's like that's like the goal of mine is to eventually be able to give back to my parents because they kind of were the ones that were able to. I don't know. They just were the ones that you know. A lot of parents can make it difficult for somebody trying to get into social media and stuff, but they were luckily very supportive of the whole situation. So that's nice. awesome. Yeah, I guess that's a like. You know, I, I've said before, like my dad was always like, you got to get into trades, you know, that's where money is and stuff like that. Did you, mm -hmm. ha I mean, obviously you've said that your parents were supportive, but were they ever like that where it was like, oh, yeah. uh, Nick, come on. Yeah, man. again, uh, so, so like I said, like my parents dumped so much money into, into making me, you know, the wrestler of being you know being a wrestler going to college getting you know getting a scholarship and because they you know they knew i was dumb i was terrible at school i always slacked off i couldn't pay attention and uh and well they did that that was like mostly because of my dyslexia we didn't know i had dyslexia until like senior high school and that's like what made it difficult to like be able to like read and, and do anything in school but um so it was like you know college scholarship and like my dad would drive me like an hour, like every single week, multiple times a week to like a wrestling club. They dropped all this money on me to get in the best wrestling schools and like uh, compete. And then senior year is when I'm supposed to get a scholarship. You know, I was, I, was, I finally made it to captain of the team, like one of the captains of the team. And then I went to them and I was like, I'm quitting wrestling. I'm going to make YouTube videos. And they were, <laughs> and like my dad is like, like, you know, don't Nick sounds I, good. Exactly. So, you know, like, and like again, like my dad owned an oil, you know, an oil chain shop in New York, and like that's where I worked for him a lot of the time. I went, I changed oil, like, you know, he built, he built my house. Like he, he, he's, 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 he's very good. Like he's, you know, he's very crafty, and he works with his hands, and he wants me to get a job, and like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's not a traditional job, you know. It's for, it's the furthest thing from it. So at that time, I was like disowned. It was like the most. The worst, the worst time in my life, I think, is the best way to put it. Like, and like again, like my mom is a phenomenal person. Love my mom to death. She's she's the best thing in the world. That's and it's um, it, it's just at the time. So, um, it was like this whole situation happened. I was like disowned. Basically, they were like, "You want to create videos? Then fine. You're gonna you know you're gonna be by yourself. You're gonna you're gonna figure it out. If you want to do yeah. this, and you're gonna ruin you're gonna ruin your future." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> um. And then, and then I told my mom, I was like, oh, I, I want to, I want to take you guys out to dinner and maybe like ex explain the whole situation. And then she was like, listen, like there's nothing between us. Like, she's like, it's, it's oh, like, you, this is your decision. I get it. But if anybody ever asked about you ever again, we're going to tell them how much of a disappointment you've become. And I was like, wow. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so that, that like was like the hardest hitting thing that I've ever heard like yeah. ever. And then that kind of made me like, okay, like you need to make this work. Cause like, there's no other option. Like you need to make this work. And then that's like, it worked out. I started getting paychecks. I, I showed them, I started like, Hey, I'm making money from this. I started, I went to, you know, YouTube next up. And um, then I started, it was, it was my job. I turned it into my job and, and, and they were kind of, they were then from that point on, it's, it's tough. And like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're wrong for doing what they did. Like that's, you know, it's uh they put all this time and effort into making me a great wrestler and then i just spit in their face and was like oh i'm not doing it anymore i completely understand with how they acted about it because yeah. I, I would have done the same way but then like after everything settled you know i've i have the best relationship with my parents now but it's um at that time i you know i understand where they were coming from and uh and yeah it was just it was it was it was rough and then they said that that was like the only time that i've ever proved them wrong they were like you know we're you know we're proud of you and it was like the only time you ever proved us wrong and i was like okay good it came full circle what you're saying is a few years ago you would not have bought them a house first <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at the check I got. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I still would have. It's just, it's like, again, it's, it's, it's tough. And like, you know, and I, and I, and I, you know, and I, and like, I understand exactly where they're coming from, but that was like, yeah. that was like, I got to make this work. Yeah, wow. That's what I always but say I, to, it's like trying to, the parents obviously want the best for their kid and they never want their kid to struggle in life. And I think, you know, for, for the older generation, like, being a content creator is this new job that we like never have it for. And it's almost like, you know, when people said, Oh, internet, is just a fad, you know, like the internet's going to go away and stuff, you know, it's like, I feel like the parents still, it's like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to be a YouTube star and I'm going to create YouTube content and stuff or TikTok, Right. They're like, well, that's not going to last. So what are you going to do after that? Right. Mm. Uh, but I think that's a great thing is like, we've seen so many people like, go from YouTube or Instagram to YouTube to TikTok to, you know, and be so versatile at switching platforms. And, you know, I guess once you have such a great following, it is a lot easier to then transfer them over, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I've seen a lot of guys uh, transition really well, you know, and, you know, when the pandemic hit, like so many guys jumped on making Facebook videos and stuff like that, right? Um uh, good or bad uh, and uh, you know uh, it's it's inspiring to see that and I'm sure your parents you know like you said once they saw checks coming in and stuff and see you're doing well then it's a, it's a different story right yeah no but, uh, I, 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 educating them on that this can actually be a job yeah exactly like I said like it's it's you know it's tough for them like they, they didn't know what social media they didn't know you could create videos on the internet and make money from it they just thought I was yeah. being like a you know a, you know thought I was being insane but again yeah. and like I think that's part of the reason why I was able to go as far as I did with the magic thing is just because um you just gotta that's the main thing with social media and anyone whenever anybody's like oh I want to get into social media I know a lot of people are like, oh, you should definitely like dabble in it and see if you like it and post a little bit. But it's like you just got to dive head first in and like, yeah, it, you know, and the only option is you start swimming or you're going to sink to the bottom and drown. Like it's it's the you can't be comfortable. And like that's how I was able to do the magic thing and then able to do the gaming thing because both situations I was super like uncomfortable. And, I, you know, my parents yeah. made it uncomfortable for me and they said, you know, it's either this or you're done. You know what I mean? Make it work or you're, you know, you're out of the house and, and you're moving out and you're, so it's like, it's kind of like, you just got to be in those situations, I think, to really like see success with social media, not saying that I'm anywhere successful with social media, but it definitely helped me like create some sort of income from it. And like, I, I just think that's super important when it's like, you have whenever anything, honestly, in my opinion, just be super uncomfortable with it. It, it, yeah. it helps you, it helps you grow. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, going outside of your comfort zone makes you better. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's why we're doing this show. Into making it like <laughs> it's literally own. why so Magic After Dark started because I was like, I need to, you know, build my Instagram following and stuff. I need to, you know, hit these numbers and everything. And my one buddy has like 70,000 followers or whatever, 100,000 followers. I was like, how did you do that? He's like, I did Instagram live every night for 30 nights. And I was like, that's insane. That's pretty, that's pretty nuts, though. That's he got that bar growth. off of. Yeah, yeah it's insane. Well, growth. he didn't. Well, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's that. like a lot of behind the scenes. But, yeah. So what he did yeah. then was after he did that, he was getting on other people's uh, Instagram lives and then their followers. Like, it, it was a while, like it took a year or two years or something like that, but yeah. uh, maybe not even a year, but yeah. um, I but think I, I know like, who you're oh. talking about too. Yeah. I was like, dude, this is, you're killing this. And so yeah. he was like, yeah, hop on Instagram live. So I did, I started hopping on Instagram live every night and I did it for about a week and a half and I was doing mentalism on it. And I was like, and it sucked cause I was using my phone. So I was trying to do it on my iPad so I could use my phone for things. And I was like, uh, and, you know, and every night I was hopping on at 11 o'clock and some nights it was going four hours and I was like, oh, you know, you're exhausted the next day. And it's like, oh, it's almost 11 o'clock. I got to hop back on. Uh, and eventually I ran out of like mentalism effects to do over Instagram live. Yeah. And then I was like, but I had built this small, this tiny little following of people that were coming on every single night. And a lot of them weren't even magicians to learn and talk about magic and ask questions and stuff about the industry and everything. And 
then it branched out to Magic After Dark because I was like, well, all these people seem really interested in this. Why don't I bring some friends on that can then show or talk about mm -hmm. content? Um, and uh, and then one thing led to the next. So, But it was putting myself in that uncomfortable zone where I was like, all of a sudden I have to sit on camera. Like, you know, I, I speak in front of people all the time, but it was like, I now have to sit in my room with myself yeah, alone it's a different ball game. and just talk to to a bunch of people that are just texting things to me like yeah you know and not seeing them it was a it was a very weird thing at first uh and yeah. i didn't know like my buddy i remember he said like get ready for the first time like the first week you're gonna have like six people watching you uh yeah. and, you know and that's the crappy realization where it's like yeah i'm on here i'm doing my thing and no one is watching me yep you know? so oh, i know but uh, but I love that. Yeah, put yourself in that uncomfortable zone because if you're comfortable, then you're not you're not, you're not moving growing. forward. You know, you're yeah. not you're not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I know a sim I feel a similar thing with uh, with just like deciding to do magic as a job. You know, and like the amount of people that when I said like oh, I'm gonna move out to LA and do magic, and they were like, all right, you should get a job as a waiter. <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah, but. If I, it might, my thought process was like, if you, if you, uh, if you have a safety net and you get too close to the safety net, you're going to get like wrapped up in it. Like you're yeah. going to get wrapped up in the net and trapped. No, like you true. see, you, you see people that move out to LA and say, I'm going to be an actor and then they, end, or actress or whatever, they end up becoming a waiter or a waitress. And then a decade later, they're still a waitress and haven't been able to pursue that career because plan B has become the, the only plan, you know, it's no, exactly. because like you get stuck in that safety. But if you just go out there and you're like, no, I'm gonna, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to pursue this, like whatever the, whatever the path is and you make it your only option, then you will find a way to make that option work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the main thing. Like a lot of people always ask me, they said, like what's you know what's plan b it's like okay oh that's cool but like what's plan b and it's like still to this day there is there is no plan b because yeah this is the moment there's a plan b is when things start to fall apart because yeah. then there's like oh i'm just you know this is my safety net i'll just you know if this doesn't work out then i'll just yeah. do this it, it can't be like that it has to be yeah. this has to work out or i'm gonna die that's i mean I, that's just the way that yeah. i don't know this is the way i've always looked at things and i think that's just I don't know. I think that's like wrestling coach mindset. That's like whatever he said. It was like you win or you die. And I was like, oh my god. That kind of was like ingrained in me. So I was like, okay. Uh, you, were, you weren't wrestling. You were playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, basically. No, hundred <laughs> percent. Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, that's, that's yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, because like especially when you're in those moments when you're grinding and like you're you're working crazy hard to try and make that thing work. Like, it, it would be so much easier to just say, okay, well, I could just like take a paycheck this week. I could just you know work wherever, yeah. and I could just get a paycheck, and and then I'll get by the next week, and the next week, and the next week. And then it's yeah. like suddenly uh, fifty two weeks pass, and it's a whole year later that yeah. you've not been at all going down that path. You know, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's like it's it's like the same thing with like uh, like Andre. Andre is absolutely crushing it. Yeah. Like and like um, when you know you know when he's mega YouTube, crushing it, yeah. mega crushing <laughs> it, and he's like a prime example. Like he he uh, he went all in or nothing. Like I remember when he was starting off YouTube and he was you know, he had like he had like the built up from the magic subscribers, but he was at like what like. Like he, he just he just hit like twenty k when he was when I was in LA with him and he was like he was just focused you know what I mean like there was no other option because like yeah. he was like he was distancing himself from like the cardistry and magic and he just really like and it just proves like that if he if you don't think of the other plan B and you really focus at something you know Andre could there's a lot of times where Andre just didn't he didn't go out he didn't do stuff because he would just was so hyper focused and there was no plan B there's no fallback yeah. and now he's he's absolutely killing. Like killing the game, it's insane. Yeah, that was the, uh, the circus training behind him. <laughs> I remember he said he's like, yeah, I just practiced cardistry. Well, like when he was doing cardistry, like how much he focused on it was like, yeah, you know, next level. And he's like, well, mm -hmm. but that's what we do to train for the circus, right? It's like you train eight hours a day on this. So I feel mm -hmm. like he has a really good background on like just I've, trickness. I've noticed athletes have are like always 
do well at social media. Like I have a buddy of mine who says his name is John Malecki. Um, and he used to play in the NFL. Uh, and, uh, and I graduated YouTube next up with him and, uh, he used to play in the NFL and then he got dropped. He used to play on the Steelers and he, and then he got dropped in the NFL and he started woodworking and he does, and he does all work and he's phenomenal at what he does. And he's absolutely crushing it on YouTube right now. And I just found like, it's just, it's that it's weird, like athlete mindset of like, just grind as hard as you can. And like, yeah. eventually you're going to see success. It's just wild to see, you know, and it's yeah. the same thing with Andre. It's just that circus, like training mindset. Yeah, definitely. It's like, yeah, like you said, do it or you're, you're done. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting though, because, so I would say the same thing. Like I've always, I, I mean, I've got my hand in a bunch of different things and performing stuff, but like this year when COVID hit, like I lost a ton of, or last year I lost a ton of money with shows mm -hmm. and, and the virtual show game wasn't really on like taking stride yet. Like people were talking about it, but not no one that really had a great setup and stuff for it. And I went and worked a regular job for two and a half weeks. And that's all I lasted because I, I, I walked out at lunchtime. I was like, I'm out of here. I was like, <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, I just hated life. And I was like, yeah. uh, so I worked in a factory. This is like the best COVID job you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. He, he helps people find jobs. And I was like, oh, man, I lost like, you know, a ton of money this week. And he was like, I could have a job for you tomorrow. And I was like, oh, really? And then he just set it up. I didn't really want it, but he just did it. And I was like, it just happened. I guess I got to go now, right? Like, <laughs> like I guess I got a job <laughs> now. <laughs> He's like, I guess I got a job. Friend, like, oh, just not like show up on the first day and be like, oh, yeah, sorry, man. I didn't really need the job. But so I go and I'm, I'm working on an assembly line making hand sanitizers for like hospitals. So it's like oh the best COVID job ever. Like the only time that it's ever needed was, yeah. uh, was COVID. And so after the first week, I was already like making changes to the schedule for the supervisors and stuff. And I was like, by week two, I was like, I know how to run all the machines in this, in this factory and everything. And then I was like, by week two and a half, I was like, I cannot, I cannot do this. I was like, this is the kick in the pants that I need to never, ever do this again. Yeah. But I feel like that was to me, like it, it was never a plan B, but it was always, it was like, Oh, I failed plan a. Uh, so now let's get back on the horse and destroy. And uh, this year has been my best year ever. Uh, yeah, it's, great. Know, it's like, yeah, sometimes I think too many times when, when we are failing, it's like, Oh no, it's got to work. Or, or people are like, I'm too good. Like, look at what I've done. How could I do this other job? You know? And so for me, it was humbling to see like what people do. Cause I remember talking to a girl and I was like, why do you work here? Like, it's terrible. And she's like, Oh, I know I would quit in a second, but the money is great. And I was like, what? The money is horrendous. The money is so terrible. Yeah. But for most people, they, aren't on that same level of like creativity and all that and like having a passion and going after it. And so for me, it was a humbling experience to see like what a regular person, like I don't want to say a regular person, but what an everyday person. What a peasant. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what those guys in your video, like the trailer, like the fur traders and stuff, like, they do for money, right? Like, no, no, um, like, I, I, I get yeah. it. Like, it's like, but some people like need that, that like me, never that person. I, I don't think I could work a nine to five. I've, I've done. And like, again, like that's, that's so important. Yeah. I think a lot, a lot of the times, like a lot of people are getting into social media um, and starting to see some success with it very early on. But I think it's so important to work a job that you despise yeah. and work a lot of them. So you realize how much you actually hate and how much you don't want to go back to it. I worked in a restaurant. I worked as a bus boy. I worked as a bar back. I worked as a, you know, a, so somebody who changed oil underneath cars and I hated all of them. It just wasn't for me. And it's like, I despised it. I despised it so much. And it's, it's so important to work those jobs. So you know what, 
what the other side is like. So you know that there is no plan B because if you go back to that, it's, you know, it's, you can't. So, yeah. um, but it's there are like, there's, you know, as a friend of mine, um, he cooks um, and he's great at cooking and he, I, 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 I pushed him so much to create uh, content online. Cause I, I, I wanted him to create content online. I was like, dude, like, like you look like a skater kid and you, and, and, you know, and you cook in a corporate restaurant, like it just doesn't match up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so like go and make content of making these like gourmet meals, but dressed as like, you know, some skater kid who like doesn't know what he's doing. And I was like, it's, it's, it's perfect, but it's just for him. Like he doesn't, he doesn't want it. Like he enjoys, you know, going in every day, going from nine to five, what, or, you know, what walking out, getting the paycheck. It's just, it makes him happy. And like, just to yeah. me, it doesn't make me happy. And like, I don't think there's any sort of, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with him doing that, but, like it's it's no, it's how he feels. It's how I feel, and it's just like it, it's 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 weird to see. Like my brain doesn't work like that. Yeah, no, yeah. I, it's interesting because a lot of times I've had this talk, especially when I was consulting for like groups of magicians. I would say a lot of times I'd be like, "Man, this magician is really lazy," or like their work ethic is really bad. Like they do shows, but their manager books everything. They don't do anything. And I would start asking them, I've asked a number of magicians, uh, did you ever have a job before doing magic full time? Like I worked landscaping, like I've had a ton of jobs. So I worked landscaping where I was doing physical labor, building interlock pads and stuff, right? And so I'm laying brick all day, every day for months on end. And I think you learn there like work ethic. And for me, like working at this, uh, this hand sanitizer place, was just a very, very quick reminder of like, uh, and I mean, I if my buddy didn't set it up, I wouldn't have done it, but I was like, man, I appreciate more so now when people come to my show, when they buy tickets to my show, uh, especially when they buy tickets for their family, I'm like, their whole family coming to my show may have been like a full day of work for that person. Yeah, you know, so they just have to work yeah. eight hours to be able to see me for an hour, mm -hmm. right? And so, if anything, I gain that out of it. But I mean, my work ethic has always kind of stayed the same, where it's like I gotta hammer everything out. But I found a lot of magicians, and I'm sure you think the same with like social media people, is if they haven't done anything before, then that work ethic quickly dwindles away because it's like, well, mm -hmm. when it gets tough. They've never worked a tough job, so they're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's you, you, it's, it's 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 important. You gotta you gotta work those crappy crappy jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those jobs. Yeah, you gotta, well, yeah, you gotta you gotta do something that you don't like and you don't want to do. That way, you know, like, oh, I I need to get out of this, and yeah. it shows you like how much. And also, like, you end up being so much more grateful for being able to to do something that you actually are passionate about that you mm -hmm. care about, you know? I mean, I have it happening right now. My, like my little brother, he's, um, he's, he is, what is he in? I think he's in his junior year of high school right now. And he's like, Oh, I'm just going to do social media. And like, he hasn't worked a job yet. He's like, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to do social media. I'm try it. But he's not even, you know, he's, he's he, like, he's, he's on it. And then he's off it. He's on it. He's off it. And like, I keep telling them, I'm like, man, you just, you gotta just go, like, go get a job somewhere, go work in Target, go, go, you know, yeah. good, go, go, go work at a bar. And if you enjoy it, great, stick with it. You know, it might be something you love. You might enjoy working at Target and then, and then turn into the manager. And that, like that, that's, that's phenomenal. There's nothing against that. Like people love those types of jobs. So yeah. you've got to figure out who you are first. You might enjoy the structure. You might enjoy going in at certain times. You might enjoy like, this is what you have to do, get it done. And then you're in and out, you make the money. Or you've realized that you hate that, and then you go to social media, and then you really develop that respect for the social media game. Yeah, so no, exactly. It's important. Absolutely. So, uh, Blaze. Yes. Are you ready? Is there? Uh, uh, I'm ready. Nick. You? Yeah. Nick, we wanted to give you a little bit of an IQ test tonight. You mentioned oh, you mentioned Lord. earlier the the dyslexia, but I don't think that has anything to do with your <laughs> IQ. I yeah. think that you. <laughs> You I guys think are like, you wow, your IQ, IQ is significantly test. low, Nick. I don't know <laughs> no. what's happening. <laughs> no, 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 man. I think you'll crush this IQ test. Nick, okay. I was just as bad of a student as you are, I am sure. Uh, I've got EDD. <laughs> what shiny thing? Hang on. Um, uh, <laughs> Squirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so, these questions are next level. Yeah. So, oh boy. Um, question one. Okay. 
How do you put a giraffe into a refrigerator? This is this is a IQ question. Yeah, this a, yeah. This is question one. To... How do you put a giraffe in a refrigerator? Do you bend the neck and then shove them in the refrigerator? Is that what we're talking about? Right? This is what we're going on about, right? I mean, it's a, it's a couple steps. You know? Okay, cut up the giraffe, put it in the refrigerator. Is this that morbid? Sheesh. Wow, I'm sorry. Is it a, wow. is it a dead giraffe or, or, or is it a dead giraffe or an alive giraffe? This is a live giraffe. <laughs> oh, it's a live one. Okay. This is um, magic after dark, but that got how, real dark real quick. How far back is the elevator? Uh, like, is it a big like restaurant freezer or is it like? These, these are all questions that you have to answer for yourself. How do you? Yeah. How do you put a giraffe into a refrigerator? Well, all the detail. Well, if it's uh, well, if it's a. Uh, like 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 a restaurant refrigerator, you would lay it on its side and then slide the giraffe in because those things go pretty far back. If it's a normal refrigerator, you bend the giraffe's neck down and put it in. I don't know. This is just me guessing. I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer this question. I mean, you're 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 kind of half right. You know, you're, you're close. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that you missed I mean, out like, on you, opening you can, the refrigerator oh, oh, and closing the door. Those two parts were. Oh, you those really parts. You got to open the door to put it in. You got to oh, open okay, the refrigerator, cool. put the giraffe in, and close the door. This question okay, tests so. whether you're doing simple things in a complicated way. Uh, <laughs> like, so. like chopping, okay, up close. The, chopping up a live uh, giraffe. Yeah, I, we, I, didn't say, live I, giraffe. Did, I didn't say a live. I said snapping just chop it, off. Snapping his neck. Snapping its down. neck and putting it in. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so, Ryan, you want to ask the next okay, question? Okay, so it's, it's going right. to be these types of questions. Question two is how oh, you put an elephant in the refrigerator. Remember, these are multi-step answers. Okay. Open the refrigerator. Put the elephant in the refrigerator. Then shut the refrigerator door. I'm sorry. Oh, unfortunately, that's so incorrect, wrong. Nick. Of course it is. What's the yeah. answer? The correct answer was uh, it, it is the wrong answer is open the refrigerator, put the elephant in, and close the door. The correct answer is open the refrigerator, take the giraffe oh out, God, put the elephant dude. in, and close the door. This oh. tests your ability to think through the repercussions of your actions. All right, so right now we're uh, That's we're two. zero for two. two. Um, okay. Uh, so the Lion King is hosting an animal conference. All the animals attend except one. Which animal does not attend? This one I'm getting right. It's the elephant because he's still in the refrigerator. That's a shame. Let's go. This one, dude. Fantastic. The elephant. The elephant's in the refrigerator. Test your memory. Good memory, man. We should have asked him a bunch of questions in between. Oh, That's we should have one. just thrown yeah. in a, <laughs> do you still that. wash your hands before or after you go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Someone actually, I think it was Sasha, uh, uh, commented earlier that that's your guilty pleasure is, oh yeah, washing your hands before going to the washroom. That's the new guilty pleasure. And, uh, and we have a final question for the IQ test, or maybe not the final question, but let's see. Um, there's, there's a river, a river you must, you must yeah. cross, but it is inhibited by crocodiles. How do you solve the problem? Oh my God. Is I don't even know. Is it because I feel like this is going to be some sort of answer that has to do with the previous freaking answers. <laughs> like it's maybe put the crocodiles in a refrigerator or some crap. <laughs> <laughs> There's a river you must cross, but it is inhabited by crocodiles. How do you solve this problem? I I don't even know, guys. This is gonna be this is a tough one. It probably has something to do with the with the hosting of the 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 an all the animals at the thing. You know, like, is I asked all of my I asked a couple of neighbors this question tonight. Like I went through all the questions with them yeah. uh, to test them out, and everybody was stumped on this question. Um but you're, I feel like, you're you're, close. But, you know, I think that you're using some logic. If you were to just put the answer, how you solve the problem of crossing the river into like a, a one answer, you know, what would you say? How do, you cross, to, how do you cross the river? Um, you swim across? <laughs> or you walk over a bridge? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, really yeah, actually, answer. no. The correct answer is you swim across. All the crocodiles are attending the animal conference. I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. I freaking knew it. I just didn't say it. Oh, man. I didn't say you it like because it's, that. It's, you were like, I don't know. Maybe all the other animals are there. 
That's what I that's what I thought, but it's in the I've read it again. It said but the you know, but but it's inhabited by crocodiles. So I was like, Oh, they have to be there because it says it in the question. Uh damn. But they, yeah, they're not there. They're at the uh, animal yeah, they are at the Lion King Animal Conference. So this is this is embarrassing. <laughs> no, no, I mean it but many preschoolers got several correct answers. Anderson himself <laughs> says this conclusively disproves the theory that most managers have the brains of a four year old. So yeah. No, no, I think that you did I think that you did pretty well for that one because uh yeah, I definitely wouldn't have got. I think you got like one and a half or almost two out of four correct. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was pretty dope. That was pretty dope. I'll give him a solid one and a half. Yeah. Okay, solid cool. one and a half men. Yeah, um, awesome. Yeah. Out of five or ten? Uh, out of, out of men. Okay. <laughs> Out of a hundred. Oh, your IQ. Out of a hundred. <laughs> out of a hundred. You got one and a half out of a hundred. There's only four math. questions. Let me do the math here. Uh, oh, that's, uh, yeah. Like nothing percent. Yeah, great job. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. you get one and, uh, and a half out of four. Numbers that's check like out. Approximately 37 point. Yeah, it's, it's zero percent, man. It's zero percent. Zero point zero one five. Oh, I guess you got times by a hundred, so yeah. Wait, how did you even get that? <laughs> huh? I don't ask questions. <laughs> did you just type in 0 0.015? If you no. do 1.5 divided by 4. Oh, you just go divide by 100. 100. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you did, you did, get, you did get less than 1%. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to times it by 100 then to give the percentage, so it's actually 1.5%. 1.5 percent yeah yeah that's i think you guys mean. did the math wrong i think that's just your force number it's probably is it equivocate or equivocate <laughs> all right so let's throw that one away uh, is looking up how to get the percentage correct on <laughs> well obviously we're fudging the numbers if there's four questions and it's out of a hundred <laughs> <laughs> out of 100, I, I make it's out of 100, of course, dude. This is IQ. What are you talking about, man? No one put me in a box. Um, so, so um, how do you think the world would be different if bananas were illegal? I, don't know, I love bananas. Yeah, it would, it would be pretty different, right? There, yeah, there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be many bananas. It would be. I don't even know. I guess that <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Guess there wouldn't be bananas. I guess I wouldn't have bananas. Like smoothie bars would be like closed. Smoothie down. bars, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Nobody. The smoothie knows. bars would close down. People would overheat, and then people would yeah. die, and Monkeys. then the planet would go extinct. Monkeys non-existent. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. I never realized how much we depend on Jamba Juice. To survive. <laughs> <laughs> and banana bread. America yeah. runs oh, yeah. on Jamba. Exit smuggling plantains. <laughs> Here's a crazy question. Nick, can you yep. cry underwater? And if so, is it water or tears coming down from your eyes? Hmm. I guess it would technically be, I guess you can cry underwater because the liquid coming out of your eyes is different from the liquid in the pool because liquid in the pool is it's chlorine and and water and then liquid coming out of your eyes is salt and unless you're in a salt water pool so you you would essentially be able to tell the difference from your tears and the pool water correct am i right or am i wrong well i mean have you have you ever felt that sad underwater no definitely not yeah. i don't know anybody that's cried underwater um, Xavier said that is easy. He said, um, he's like, yes, you can cry underwater, all caps. <laughs> he's like, I mean, what if, what if, I mean, once the moment you touch the water, once you're underneath, what if you're just not that sad anymore? Once you, maybe you have bigger problems. Like, well, I don't know if tears can come, like, like, obviously, you know, other bodily functions can come out underwater, but they have way more pressure than like your teardrops don't have that much pressure behind them. Mm -hmm. right? so obviously the water is pushing against you does your teardrops have enough pressure to push tears out when mm, water if the tears them? never leave your eyes does it count as crying xavier i think i just upped that question for you as well comment below. <laughs> all right Jeez. um what's your favorite meme oh my favorite meme oh um it's a picture of um of a guy and he's like buying a car 
and then he's like and he's like pointing at it and he's talking to the salesperson and, he, and it says like a, a text bubble and it says cargo space and he's like pointing at the car and then the next scene is the is the is the guy selling the car talking to the guy and it has a text bubble and he says car no do that car no fly <laughs> <laughs> It's so stupid. Do that kind of fly. <laughs> it's so funny. Cargo space. Car don't do that. Car don't fly. <laughs> oh, uh, and then uh, and uh, and the one where it's like a girl and she's like laying and she's like dying and then she's like, "Call me an ambulance." And the guy's like, "You're an ambulance." <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> that one's bad. Oh my God. It's so funny, and it's uh you you could find all these puns on Pun Hub on on uh, on Instagram. <laughs> That's where I get them all from. Call me an ambulance meme. <laughs> all right, and then it's just. <laughs> 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 Oh, I love it. That's, great. That's a good question. <laughs> What's your favorite meme? Um, here's a good one. <clears throat> Why doesn't glue stick inside the bottle it's in? Hmm. I guess. I mean, it definitely has something to do with the, uh, like, it reaching air. Like by itself, and I guess it has to do something more with like, because there's so much of it, and it's there's not a lot of oxygen within the bottle, that's causing it not to dry. So when you put it out of the bottle, it's a little amount, and it causes longer to dry. Like you know, when you like put a lot of glue in a glob, and it takes longer to dry than if there was like a little piece of glue. So I think mm. that probably has something to do with it. Mm. What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like these questions are getting weird, guys. <laughs> We're coming over. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Why don't do that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you just started laughing. Uh, <laughs> no, that's good. I, uh, we, I, said, uh, we, we totally told everybody at the start of this show, though, that tonight would be full of just like crazy questions, lots of laughter, stupid stuff. Just I like, feel like. It's a good break from COVID crap. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And who, and who likes people who are serious? Not me, not this guy. Yeah. Not this guy. Well, no, we not had some guy. deep moments. We had some Nick deep Siriano. moments. We came up for uh, Yeah. What got you into magic? It's like, oh, well, guys, like, listen, I get into magic. Like, it's like nobody wants to see that. Yeah. I'd rather, That's why I'd rather... we had all of that in the rapid fire question. <laughs> rapid fire question. <laughs> <laughs> we could get rid of a lot of these questions really quickly. <laughs> you know, like. Who's your favorite magician? Thurston. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get it. <laughs> no. Thurston. No, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I've never I, heard somebody say Thurston is their favorite magician. That's a really I I, I really I really got stumped on that. It's probably yeah, honestly Ricky like, Jay. No, he's just but like, uh it's it's pro it's probably Ricky Jay or, or, or like or ha and like Howard Thurston. These are just people from like card throwing. So mm -hmm. that's the only reason I said that. Yeah, like cards as weapons and everything. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. of course. So, and that was was that like so when you were studying card throwing cards as weapons was that like a big resource for you kind of i actually didn't read the book till like later on mm. um it was more of just like it was it was weird like i think a lot of it was just from the camp counselor and then there wasn't much youtube tutorials or anything like the only thing like there you know the, there was like small tutorials here and there but like really like getting into it there wasn't really much on it and like the stuff that was on it, you had to buy. And like I didn't really have that much money, so I wasn't. I didn't want to like buy like the Rick Smith Jr. DVD, and I didn't want to buy like the Cards as Weapons book. I was just lazy, so I just kind of like just worked on all bunch of different grips and did a bunch of different things and saw what worked better. And I was like, oh, I'll just figure it out myself. No, here's um, a good thing because we've had Rick on Magic After Dark on the Instagram series. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did some card throwing with Rick in Vegas at Magic Live a couple of years ago, two years ago now. Um, and I throw cards differently than Rick does. We both throw crazy hard. Mm -hmm. uh, we were having challenges on who could hit different things and stuff. But do you, like, obviously you guys are friends, and I, I know you've thrown some cards together at Magi Fest and stuff. 
Do you guys throw the same way? Uh, I think we actually throw differently. Um, I know that I can't. I can't really remember how Rick throws, honestly. Yeah, he's uh, like because uh, uh, I I remember how like he throws. This, like the full. Let me let me put my hand up here. So oh my like, god, I've never oh, I've seen never that. seen anybody do that. <laughs> yeah, so, so it just I'm like full length on the. the holy end. crap! I've and never I, seen whoa. anybody do that. And I almost like bend the card as I bring it yeah. in. Yeah, and then and then like that's oh. wild. Oh. Yeah, but uh, he was like like this, I think, like from from the corner. Yeah, I think he holds it like this. Yeah. My, uh, mine is basically kind of like this sort of grip. I kind of just do that. This is like okay. my grip that I'll do. Um, and that's kind of like what falls in naturally to me. I end up just doing this. Like I like grip it weird. Like I do this position with my thumb. <laughs> This guy's wrist deep. <laughs> this guy's wrist deep. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll also do this. I'll do that as well. Oh, I do, like, I do that get, a lot a, as like a casual thing. But like, yeah, no, like I, I know like a lot of people do it for like boomerang and stuff. Yeah. But uh, you could do it as like a card throwing and it like whips the card really fast. I don't think I've ever tried that way. You should try it like that. How are you doing it? That uh, way is like really this. fun. So you're so, Index on top. Someone so you're basically you're basically doing yeah. this position. So okay. imagine that, and then slide a card in. So it's that. Yeah. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna extend this finger and then yeah. flick the wrist. That looked really oh. silly when you did it yeah. without a card. Just like, <laughs> oh, that's pretty good though. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's cool, and you can use it to like boomerang the cards and stuff. <laughs> some decent spin on that yeah no no it's it's like it, you get so much spin if you do it like that and then you yeah. add the rest and you'll get even more spin and obviously the more yeah. spin you have the deeper it cuts so remember yeah. when we were filming that trailer mm -hmm. and i was just failing at trying to like land it like two feet away I was trying <laughs> to hit like just in frame <laughs> i kept missing <laughs> i remember and that i was like wait yeah, can i just hold the camera and you just <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny I'm much better doing it uh, downwards <laughs> than uh, yeah, they're doing it up. I just it up, but uh, but yeah, yeah, it was odd. I taught on his on one of his YouTube things on like how I throw cards differently, and uh, that's wild. I've never seen anybody do it like that. I think I learned on watching like Poker Stars back in the day. Uh, that's wild. So I was throwing it like that, and I was like, oh, okay, that, and then tried it, and I was like, yeah, that works. Hmm. But, that's so wild. Yeah, I can't is, imagine being accurate with that because you're you're weird. bending it into your hand, so like it's gonna you got the tension. To, I mean, I guess the more you practice it, it's accurate. But. It's like uh, like card throwing is weird. Like I'm so if I don't practice like like yeah. every single day, like when I was filming, I was super accurate. Like I was like I, I felt like I was a superhero, and then um, then when I went on. Um, it was like MTV's amazingness. It was like a show like Rob Deerdick was putting together. Um, and I went on that show and leading up to that, I obviously practiced like crazy. Oh, and yes. like, I thought I was like a superhero. Like, cause like then I was like super, I, every single day for like six hours a day, I was throwing cards just so I could yeah. get out there and perform well. And then like, it's crazy. Like, it's like, it's not one of those things where like, it's not like riding a bike, like Card throwing, if you're not practicing, like leading up to something where you have to throw the cards, you're going to drop off and you're going to be so like not accurate. Yeah. Really weird. Really, really weird. Interesting. So I know if you don't like, use it, you lose it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Rick was telling me as well, like, you know, he's really, really accurate within like six feet or something like that. Like mm -hmm. six feet, which I feel like most of us that throw cards are probably pretty good within six feet. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know he has like the distance record and stuff like that. Did any of that stuff ever like cross your mind? Like, hey, let me try to compete with him and, and go after those records. Uh, it really wasn't a thing because, again, like it's not those things. It's I don't know. It, it's not one of those things. It's never something that really like intrigued me with even the same thing with gaming. Like I, I just not being competitive in a sense of like being the best, like, yeah. you know, like I, I don't, I don't really care to compete to be the best, and like not saying that I could, not saying that I could even compete with him. But yeah. like I'm just saying, like it was, it was never something where like, oh, I want to be the best card thrower. It's like, no, I want to be the card thrower that makes the best looking videos, or like the card thrower that 
and it has like the coolest, you know, cinematic fight scenes and stuff. Like that's kind of more intriguing to me than like being, you know, yeah. holding a record. That's a funny thing, like with fight scenes with playing cards, because I was like literally at the time when I learned how to do it, my roommate at the time came back to the house and I was like, bro, check this out. <laughs> and like bombed a card and he's like, you gotta show me how to do that. <laughs> then, uh, we had like an open concept living room and kitchen and I was like behind the kitchen table and he's behind the couch. Like we moved everything around and we were literally bombing because I had like 50 decks of cards open there and we were just bombing cards, grabbing them off the floor, throwing them at each other. Like, and it just became war. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, that would be fun to shoot that. And like, just yeah, that exactly. That. That's like, I mean, that's like all my channel was, it wasn't like at the time with like the card throwing hype, it was like, it, it, it was all just, me and my friends messing around with playing cards. Like we would pick a card and one of those cards would have a body part on it. And another card would have a number with like how many cards we had to throw at that bare body part. So it'd be like bottom yeah. of the foot eight. And we'd have to throw like eight cards at the bottom of the foot. And we did like wars with each other and we would throw cards and like count the, you know, we do games and stuff. So like, that's kind of like where more of my content went instead of just like challenge, uh, trying to compete and stuff. Yeah. We had a question a while ago. Um, how long does it take you to film and edit a TikTok? <laughs> Depends on the TikTok. Because <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, a lot of like editing stuff, I, I, I get in my own head and I like really need to like make it perfect. Like in, in my opinion, like in my vision, like as best as I can get it. So if I'm like missing something, I have to like either reshoot it or something. But like on average, probably like the average amount of time that I spend like in the whole filming editing and, and posting process is probably like around four to five hours mm. um doing a TikTok. sometimes even longer like when i do like the you know the the other uh, thing where i like add all the games i do like minecraft cod apex rainbow six each all in like one TikTok, and i do all the effects for that that'll take me like the whole day to edit and get done and filmed just because it's like a big lengthy process mm. and but, uh, so you post one every single day that's that 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 was my old schedule but then as my tiktok started getting more like heavily edited i was like i can't do this because then i'm not doing anything else <laughs> it's like i can't even make youtube videos i can't even do anything um so now i do like my 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 main schedules now is probably like one every other day or like like one yeah yeah like one every other day and then if i have like event like if i have to go to like the fsg castle then i like won't post for the week and then it's kind of like that's how it works I think that's what might be like, I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing mentalism on TikTok and stuff. Like, let's get this going and everything. And then I remember talking to Pete McKinnon and I was like, Pete, like you're doing all this YouTube content and stuff. And, you know, I know like on a weekly basis, it's tough so for him. He's trying to come up with new content for like shooting uh, photos and stuff or video, right? Like, and if companies aren't sending you stuff, what do you talk about every single week and stuff? And I, I said to him, like, how does it feel to be like basically owned by YouTube at this point? Because you are so like invested in it uh, that you have to do it all the time. Like, you know, the magic crasher, he's telling me like, he's like, I film content every single day, like, you know, and it's just nonstop. And I'm like, how does it feel like I love my life because I can go and do those 10 different things. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm still focusing on magic, but do you get to a point? Like, I like what you said, like, you know, right now you're not posting every single day, but does it get to a point where you're like, Oh, I have to make a TikTok, you know, or I have to do like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think it's, uh, it only gets that way when like, a TikTok will like I'll, I'll post a TikTok and it'll pop off. Like for example, those like ones of like give different games in real life, those take so long, and like still you know they'll pop off, but it just takes so long to edit. And it's one of those things, just like oh I got to shoot that video. Like I normally get excited about a TikTok, but like oh this is a funny joke, I can't wait to make it yeah. and post it. But uh, yeah, it's been tough, like just with time management honestly like i didn't realize how much of my life it would take over and yeah. the whole filming process and everything and like now that officially like i'm starting to dive into youtube again and i'm starting to work with a bunch of different companies with like merch and and go back and forth and i, I know i'm coming up on a million so like that's the main thing i'm coming up on a million i don't want to like do anything wrong i kind of want to just like make sure i'm 
making sure everything's right. So when I, you know, it's like this is the first time I've ever had some sort of social media traction. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's weird. Just trying to just trying to time management because it's like it's just annoying. Like I have like a bunch of buddies of mine that film TikTok videos and they film it with their phone and they they film this and they go, oh look at this, this is cool, blah blah blah, and then it's a million views. And it's like, oh, I got to film a TikTok. And they're like, okay, I'm done. Let's go. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. uh, so like, I, it's, it's, it, it's tough. And just trying to figure out that time. And like, I think anybody who wants to start off TikTok, like once a day, you could do that. Like, that's important in the beginning is consistency. If you could do a TikTok yeah. once a day, you're golden. And then eventually start to dumb it down. Just like staying consistent, like regardless of what happens, just like keep posting. Yeah. Is it is it tough when you'll have a video that is like just randomly goes viral, like a million view over a million views, and then the next video it's like not at all, like you know, randomly doesn't do well, and it's like constant fluctuating, or do that's you the thing. Have to just like just keep focused and just keep posting. That's the thing about like TikTok's algorithm, like it's 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 such a weird algorithm because it's not like like somebody will follow you. And even though they're following you, they will not get pushed your content. If they like, if they like skip three of your videos when they're scrolling once and they like skip three of your videos and they just don't watch them and they, they're scrolling through like their following page, you TikTok will be like, oh, they hit your content and then they will stop showing their content to you until that you pop on, you pop up on their for you page again and they interact with it. Then it's like, oh, they probably like him. Let's feed him more of his content on his following page. Very weird how mm -hmm. the way it works. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it'll just shut off your followers basically. And like, it's weird. Some videos will do well, some videos won't. And like, it's such a large fluctuation with TikTok. And that's why like, I try to stay away from it. And it's like funny because like my mom will call me and because she, follow, she follows it. She's always watching my videos and stuff. She always like, did you see your video? It hit this many views and it's it's doing this well in this hour. And your videos normally don't. And I'm like, I'm like mom, like, and she's like, you hey, don't pay attention. I'm like, no, because it's like you get in your own head and then yeah. you get you get upset. Like it'll ruin your day. And like, I hate being that guy because like, I always see these people and they don't get their views and they get upset for the whole day. And it's an actual thing. Like you, you put all this time and, 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 and love into a video and you're like, Oh, it's going to do well. And you post it and it flops and nobody likes it. And it gets not, not as many views as the previous one. And then your day's ruined and it's crazy. And like, I don't want to intentionally do that, but it's just like the days that my videos do well, I find myself being so much more happier than the days when they don't do well. And it's like, I hate that. I hate that feeling. So I wish there's a way I could just post it. And then just like never look at it, but I have to reply to comments and I have to, like, I just, I wish I could do that. Mm. <laughs> Here's a question. So this is going back. I mean, we, I think we all remember when like Instagram changed their algorithm from like chronological order to whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of these other companies were like, uh, or apps and stuff were like, oh, we need to have a different algorithm. Do you think if we went back to doing like uh, the, you know, if you post first, you're seen first kind of thing. Do you think it would change, like, would it make the game better uh, because everyone knows, like, it's chronological order? Or do you think now with, like you said, all this high-tech algorithm stuff, does it make it better or does it just make it harder on you? Uh, are we talking about TikTok? Yeah, or, let's, say, or let's say TikTok, uh, when they first came out, like, adopted that chronological order where it was like, okay, Nick posted it eight o'clock and blaze pose at nine o'clock. So they're going to see blazes thing before they're going to see yours. They have to go back. Right. Mm -hmm. But now, um, like, like you said, everything is so crazy with the algorithms and they're constantly changing them. So you need to be constantly adapting. Yeah. Well, one, one difference though, is that like, and I don't want to cut off uh, Nick's answer cause I'm sure he'll have much more insight on this, but like one thing is with Instagram, you're, it was for a while when it was that kind of algorithm, it's like you're being just pushed content from people that you follow. You yeah. had to follow someone in order to see it. And it's because of this really weird algorithm that TikTok has that you're able to be exposed to so much content that you didn't seek out that it yeah. just assigns to you and goes like, you might be interested in this. And so it allows there to be a lot more organic reach of stuff that you like of people seeing your videos that don't follow you. So yeah. that in some ways it could be a positive, but then it means that your view counts are just like so unpredictable. I, I, I think more insight than that. I think over time, eventually, if they start to incorporate the new algorithm, it would, it would be good for people who already have developed followings. It's kind of like Instagram. People who already have followings on Instagram, they post, they get crazy amounts of views, crazy amounts of engagement. It's perfect. 
But yeah. people who don't, who, who haven't really grown a following, it's so hard to grow a following on Instagram because there's just there's no like natural organic reach. Yeah. Um, but that's why TikTok is like that's why it's that's why it's almost at the top of the game right now. It might, might even be at the top of the game, like social media wise, is like, um, you know, like excluding YouTube because YouTube's just absolutely crushing it. But um, it's just it's it's so easy to grow on TikTok, and it just takes consistency and high quality videos. And the prime example of it is um, uh, is Shano. Do you guys know Shano? Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know if you know this, but he has a TikTok page where he doesn't do magic. Do you guys know this? I know. Um, I rem I remember checking out his TikTok very early on when he was just like, "I don't get this app." <laughs> yeah, because no, he was like, "My first video went super viral, and then my next one got like 100 views." Yeah, so uh, he popped up on my for you page, and he was at like, I think he was at like 13,000 followers. Um, and I reached out, he was texting me. He's like, "Dude, I don't, I don't know what TikTok is." He's like, and he was posting for like probably like a month and a half every single day high quality videos so well edited and he was getting like at like a thousand views if lucky on each video and he wasn't growing at all in followers and i was like dude just like and like i told him i said your content is is way better than mine way better than anybody i've seen on tiktok i was like keep posting and you're gonna explode and he's like i don't know hopefully 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 and like right now he's like at four hundred thousand, i think mm -hmm. And he's like getting like consistent, like a hundred thousand video, like views per video around there. And it's just like, it's so cool to see because like TikTok has that organic growth. And yeah, like you were saying, like it pushes you what you want to see. But it's funny because like we were with this one guy. Um, I, I didn't know him. He's a buddy of like my friend. Um, and we were out and we were like, oh, he's like, you guys do TikTok. Okay, that's cool. He's like, I don't like TikTok. It's just, it's a bunch of like, it's a bunch of like girls like dancing in bikinis. And I was like, I was like, man, TikTok. <laughs> It's like you don't have to like a video for TikTok to know you're into it. If you're scrolling through a TikTok and you stop on it for a different amount of time than the rest, it says, okay, you're more engaged with this. Let's feed you more of that content. So all of his feed was just dancing girls in bikinis. We're like, okay, dude. Like, <laughs> that's why it's that because that's, that's, that's all you're looking at. But yeah. uh, it's – and that's, you know, that's why it's good. That's why the TikTok algorithm is good. And that's why like, anybody should hop on TikTok right now just because it's like – the the, the 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 like organic reach is there and it's no longer going to be there in my opinion in like in like the near future i feel like they're eventually going to change their algorithm so it's more profitable you know so they can push more ads and do more stuff like instagram did you know instagram had a perfect algorithm at one point and then now it's everybody hates instagram so i, I think it's i you know i think it's inevitable and it's eventually going to happen that's but i think people need to if facebook buys it out right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly but uh, but yeah, I, I I definitely think that people should hop on TikTok right now if it's you know if you're promoting anything. I definitely experienced what you were talking about with the like if you feel bad after you have a video that does really well and then it doesn't do well after that and then for me it, I ended up losing motivation and I should get back to it because like I had a couple of videos that like out of nowhere when I had like a couple hundred followers randomly get like multi-million views. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best app ever. And then I started posting videos that did really well for me on in organic reach around when like reels were starting out on Instagram. And they did really well on Instagram. And then on TikTok, they just did horrible. And it was just like like 200 views. And I'm like, how how is it that I have 10K followers, but only 200 views? Like how are the, yeah. my, the people that follow me not seeing it? when I had a hundred followers and then a million people saw it, like it just didn't make any sense. And so I just like gave up on it, but I should revisit the app. Cause I mean, yeah, like, definitely. It's, I mean, it's I, definitely I, like the, one of the Kings it. of social media right now. Oh, a hundred percent to even grow anything. Like there's uh, um, what you call it? Like even for business wise, like a buddy of mine uh, owns a, uh, owns like a thrift store around here. It's like a, it's, it's like they, but they sell like uh, like more like hype beast type stuff. They'd like thrift, the, you know, thrift that stuff. And he was, he was doing like, uh, he, he, he like quadrupled his sales for like that weekend. Like if you know, the previous sales of that week, he quadrupled that price for that weekend when he, he started doing TikTok. and he was like, Oh, we do this in the shop. And he started promoting it through TikTok, And one of the videos went viral and he's been consistently like like four xing his money it's just it's been insane it's like the you know just the because because tiktok is lo, you know local based so like you post tiktok and it's going to show it to people that are around you basically that's how it works yeah. so it, it works out great for businesses like that too so if you have a business definitely tiktok is uh is, is the way 
Nice. That's good to know. I mean, yeah, I probably my buddy came over, we filmed a bunch of videos for TikTok, and then I'm more of a perfectionist, so I was like, oh, I didn't I don't like them. Not mm-hmm. good. Uh, yeah. it's not perfect. Uh, yeah. let's shoot it again or whatever, right? And it's like and then you and then when I, I was like, oh, okay, I gotta do this every single day. Right. <laughs> it's, and it's not like Instagram where you can just take a photo and it's like, oh, I just post a photo. Yeah. It's like there's gotta be some thought process that goes into making this video to make it good, anyways, right? So yeah. it uh, yeah. it's, it, it's a good challenge, anyways. That's I mean, that's why I like my I mean, I have like the utmost respect for people who are doing um like YouTube just because that's a whole different type of ball game. It's like people yeah. who are doing YouTube, like they're talking like so much longer to make videos and consistently. And it's just like, they, you know, that's why like, I mean, I eventually want to start tackling YouTube, like, like in depthly, like, uh, f- you know, for gaming, I just really haven't gotten into it. And it's tough. Like I just can't tackle the gaming, uh, creating the, uh, the you know the gaming TikToks and doing YouTube, so that's why like I, right now I'm in, I'm in the looks for an editor. So if anybody is an editor and wants to edit my YouTube videos, let me know. <laughs> Anybody's watching the podcast, <laughs> reach out. Put it on TikTok. That you're I know, honestly. <laughs> Find somebody to help me edit my YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I it, we've just we've passed the two hour mark. It's probably we should start wrapping up soon. I wanted to ask. Uh, a question and if you had another one ryan we could do that as well i was i was curious if it if you didn't have to rely on it for your career if you didn't have to rely on it to make a living right then out of all of the things that you're passionate about i know you were saying that like part of you is the fact that you're into so many different things and it's very difficult to stick with one if you were forced to only stick with one of the things that you're passionate about, whether that's magic or filmmaking or, you know, doing social media content creation, or that's, you know, f- just like fighting, wrestling, yeah. card throwing, whatever, what kind of, uh, what do you feel like would be the one that you would, you would stay with over all the rest? I think it would probably be the, just the f- creating, I guess the filmmaking aspect mm-hmm. of it. Um, that's where I had the most fun. Most of my like fondest memories uh, is creating content with friends. Like my dream, my dream thing is to have the group of guys that I film my stuff with that I did like then some of the knock stuff with mm-hmm. and have them and be able to hire them to f- come out and we all do like a project for a week and film, you know, a short film and do that stuff. Like that's, that's where I, it's, even though it's the most stressful thing in the world, it's where I get the most enjoyment and I love doing that. So I, I, I just love that process. Not necessarily editing. Editing sucks. Everybody knows that. But uh, just that whole filming process, like I would love to do that. Yeah. And if whether it's gaming, whether it's whether it's magic, whether it's short films, whatever, I just love that doing that. Mm. Nice and stuff. Nice. I think it's great. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's cool to see you. Like you know, like I said, I met you a few years ago pulling a prank on a guy, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which. Which is still the greatest prank of all time. Um, Can we which, tell this story? Which prank was this? I, mean, uh, I, I don't know if I should even say it. I don't even know what type of prank it was. I'm nervous that it's not no, something we no, should it say. Like, <laughs> uh, it, was, it wasn't that. It was, well, it was, it was a great prank. It was at Magi Fest. Uh, do you remember okay. the Colossus? Um, yes. Yeah. That was on Xavier's channel, correct? Yeah, so he's my buddy. So uh, funny. I forgot about that. that that's how we met. I, did, I completely met. forgot about that. Oh, yeah. my God. So my buddy, Kevin, uh, I was at a show with him the week before, and he, we were backstage, and I said that I was taking him to Magi Fest with me, and I was like, I, I said to uh, Bobby Mata, I was like, um, hey, uh, do you?" Uh, there was two guys coming with me, and I said, do you think these guys are ready for the Colossus? And the one guy is like hyper, um, I guess, anxious about things. Like if he doesn't know what it is, so he is like, "What's the Colossus?" And I was like, "Oh, you gotta wait and find out." And then we basically said, "Like, all right." Then I asked the next thing. I was like, "So who do you think is gonna cry first when they get the Colossus? Like Kevin or uh, the other guy's name was Xavier as well?" And I was like, "Or Xavier." And Kevin was like, I'm going to cry first for sure. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, he had no idea what it was. And so he kept calling me throughout the week. He's like, I'm not going unless you tell me what it is. 
and I remember my mom was over and she she knows Kevin and she was like, Oh Kevin, it's don't worry, it's not that bad. You'll survive. Uh and like she had no idea what it was, but uh, you know, I kind of told her like, yeah, it's just this is a thing that I made up. I literally before I said I turned to someone, I go, give me a random word, something weird. I don't know, something random. And they were like, I don't know. And I was like, Colossus, never mind, I got it. <laughs> and I and I was like, hey, what do you guys think? You know? And so we brought Kevin up, like uh, first we're driving to Magi Fest. Well, prior to that, I called Xavier and I said, Hey, you want to help me prank a guy this weekend? And I said, here's his phone number, call him. And, uh, and ask him like, so Xavier calls him and he goes, is this Kevin? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And he's like, this is Xavier. Are you ready for the Colossus? And hangs up and, and Kevin calls me and he's like freaking out. And he came up with all of these ideas on how terrible this initiation was going to be and all these really crazy things like he thought he was going to get done to him. And so Nick came up to the up to my room and I had told uh, Kevin that we had chicken wings that night for dinner and we left them in the car. And I was like, yo, can you go grab the chicken wings from the car? Like, here's my keys and stuff. So as he was there uh, getting the chicken wings, Nick... Uh, is it uh, is Brandon Wolf and Xavier oh, yeah. uh, and then the other guy Xavier? We're all in the room together, and Kevin comes back and we're like, "Are you ready for the Colossus?" <laughs> and like throughout the week, I or the weekend, I told Kevin like, "He's like, how do I get on Xavier's good side and stuff? Like, I don't want to get the Colossus." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, if you give him some candy and stuff, like." <laughs> You know, like, oh, you have Starburst there. Like, yeah, give him your the rest of your Starburst. He'll like that. And Xavier was like, the pack is open. And like, through, like, I don't want these. You're getting it worse now and stuff. And like, oh my God. I had told him, like, Josh J sends me and Xavier, like, an email of all the new attendees of Magi Fest every year. And then we initiate them. And like, yeah, it was, uh, it was I, so I, I felt so bad. Yeah. So bad. It is still Just on Xavier's uh, YouTube channel, though. If you uh, if you guys want the to Colossus see. is on his Xavier he, because yeah. we had we because uh, we had Xavier, not not uh not 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 Xavier Spade, the other Xavier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the room with Xavier before Kevin went in, so Kevin yeah, had to wait in the hall. I took Kevin out in the hall. Uh -huh. And these guys were like acting, like throwing themselves against the door, and, and, and like Xavier out. was like screaming, <laughs> like he was getting beat. It was really bad. <laughs> like that's and, the Colossus. You just get beat up. Yeah. yeah. So I had I had my uh, like my gimbal and my iPhone. So I'm filming Kevin out in the hall as well. Like Kevin, what's going through your mind right now? He's so nervous. Like he's I felt so like, bad. He looked like he saw a ghost. <laughs> and yeah. like. Um, you know, eventually he comes in the room and and uh, Xavier's like, grab a drink of water. <laughs> he like he's like so nervous to drink the water and stuff because he thinks that there's like drugs or something. <laughs> you know, and he's like, okay. And then Xavier's like, bend down and touch your toes. So he <laughs> does. And then we were like, uh, and then he, like, this was the quote of the weekend. Uh, Xavier goes. Colossus ain't real stupid. Welcome to my <laughs> day. <laughs> we, we were just like dying. It was so funny. Oh my God. So, it, was, so, it was so funny. Pranks uh, like that are so good. Oh, yeah. So, and, I mean, that is a prank we'll talk about. Uh, like, yeah. Kevin, he lives an hour from me. We'll talk about that prank for the rest of our lives because it was just. It's so smart. All the ideas that he came up with, what it could have been, were so far-fetched crazy like it's like we would all be in jail if this happened Dude, yeah like, exactly you know, uh, <laughs> the colossus the colossus let me ask you one other quick thing nick because i know we've yeah. talked about this in the past but uh i started watching a tv show again uh and i know that uh one of your relatives is part of the tv show uh I think, anyways, is it uh, mm -hmm. Practical Jokers? Mm -hmm. uh, is it like your cousin or something that's in the show? So it's basically like uh, it's not my cousin; it's Joe, okay. and uh, and he was he grew up with my dad, like basically my dad. He was like part of you, like you know how you have that person in your family that's like 
part of the family. Yeah, he's basically. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that's basically Joe. So uh, Joe is yeah. one of the best, like he's probably him and Murr. I mean, mm-hmm. Murr is hilarious as well because he's just so weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's so wild. Actually, I always love that Sal, you know, he's going to screw up when he starts repeating things. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, Sal's <laughs> he's not struggling through this. Yeah, exactly. But I remember I came out, I said to you guys, we should do. Uh, do impractical jokers with magicians at like magic conventions mm. and stuff. So, oh my god! So we still need to do that at some point because yeah, uh, it's just there's so there's so many. Awkward I would say people. do it. I would say we should do it at live this year, but you're not going to be there. I I would a hundred percent say we need to do it at live. I don't know if I'll be able to cross the border yet because of uh, all. Oh the yeah. Closing and stuff. Like we still have a border band right now, but. Mm. Um, but, uh, and I'm getting married the day before magic life. So, Oh, congrats. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. That's so, very cool. I've tried to ask my fiance if I could still go to magic life. It's a hard, hard no. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. a hard no. It's like a our, firm no. I was like, yeah. uh, but we could have our honeymoon start in Vegas. Like. It's there you go. That's your way around it. She's like surrounded by a bunch great. of magicians. Oh, that sounds like a great time. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm excited for Magic Live, especially yeah. being in Vegas now. Yeah. But, so yeah. You guys are coming to my home. Oof. I'll, I'll <laughs> no see turf. you in 2022. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but I think at least Magi Fest. I'll be, I'll be at Magi Fest. If, as yeah. long I've as still never ask. been to Magi Fest. I've only, Magi Fest was the fun. only one I've been to try is and live. To and I've, I've been to a bunch of conventions that are like in, in the Northeast. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely want to check out Magi Fest. Yeah. I mean, that's the crazy thing. We all have so much like camera gear and everything else. I've got earpieces from, I don't know why I would have earpieces, um, but I had earpieces <laughs> and stuff. And it's like, um, no reason, no reason. Uh, but, um, but it's so crazy. Like it'd be so much fun just to make yeah. people, like, uh, be so have sexy. people in your ear going, you got to say this to a magician. Um, yeah. So we were filming that's... that kind of thing in, uh, in, Orlando or in uh, Daytona a little bit with X and we're going to oh, really? do some more when I'm in Vegas, but it's more of like a, a thing of just that I have to do crazy patter for whatever I'm performing for these people. Yeah. So like right now the mission that we're on, cause we, we got an okay clip of it, but like we need to feel more of it. Um, I don't know if I should tease it, but there was one <laughs> where, where I, <laughs> I don't call them it. But it was trying to get one of the girls on the beach to call themselves a basic bitch in the middle of the performance. (laughs) Because I've gotten it to work on Omegle a bunch of times and it's hilarious. Uh, But yeah, but trying it in real life on the beach, we're going to, we're going to see it'll happen. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. I think it's got to happen. Practical jokers for magicians. It's it's my new TikTok. (laughs) <laughs> sorry guys uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's funny but it would be crazy like yeah i just think of so many things like this uh when q is calling the guy mustache a <laughs> mustache like mustache. you know like i love impractical that, jokers joe is hilarious he's one of my favorites yeah, yeah. it uh such a great show uh but yeah. i think yeah magicians we could easily be like and it would be hilarious to send you up to like, oh, hey, Blaze, you got to go talk to Copperfield and uh, <laughs> and like. Oh, my gosh. Just mess up everybody's name when you go yeah. up to him. Yeah. Oh, we, we had a thing with with four suits magic. We had a thing where like any time that you saw um, Rob Zabrecki, yeah. uh, we would <laughs> go up to him and be like, oh, my God, are you are you Robert Zabreckfist? <laughs> so, yeah. oh my God. we gotta just have those we're all different magicians go up to copperfield call him chris angel yeah you chris, hey, angel? chris angel you chris angel can i do a you trick chris for you angel? can i show you a trick chris <laughs> are you david blaine <laughs> yeah are you, are you david angel are you david angel <laughs> are you, are you, are you, are you, live i tried what were we gonna say <laughs> No, no. Keep going. I was gonna say Chris Blaine. Just keep going. Chris Blaine. <laughs> Chris Blaine. Uh, a couple years ago at live, I tried to. I was able to do it. I it, like 
way way lamer of a prank than what you're talking about but basically convincing a ton of people at live that there was a thing at the dealer's booth um that was like just a made-up trick and getting a bunch of people to all look for this made-up trick and i just described like some crazy thing i was like all right so it's called pure psych you hand it so the the guy that does it, his name's daniel silvertree and he hands <laughs> he hands he does it on stage he hands somebody in the front row a jumbo card and they're holding it up above their head with the back towards the rest of the audience and the face towards him. And then he just tell he tosses a ball in the audience. Whoever catches it names any card. And then they just the person in the audience that's holding it just turns around it and everybody in the audience sees that they've been holding the card that was just named. And, and so then everybody was just like, Oh my god, that sounds like so sick. That's crazy. And so I was like, Yeah, it's Daniel Silvertree. And all I did is I just took David Copperfield. And I was like, Silver Tree. <laughs> <It's like laughs> field. So I was like, oh, it's Daniel Silver Tree. <laughs> Silver Tree. Oh, that's funny. And I had people messaging me about it after live. They were just like, man, I just never got to see it at the dealer's booth, man. I couldn't find Daniel. Do you have a link? <laughs> Do you have a link on Penguin Magic? Can you send me the. Yeah, can you, yeah, can you send me the. <laughs> this has been good, guys. I enjoyed this. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you everybody. so much for coming on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you for being the first guest on Magic After uh, Magic After Live. Magic, so, magic dark, After Live. Dark Magic Before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's late. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but um, yeah, we. Uh, how about Ryan? You and I can wrap things up where we do the giveaway. Sounds but, good. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so uh, much again for coming have a on. Question. This. We'll ask a question about Nick. Actually, do you want to do it while he's here? And we'll see if someone remembers one of the 16 questions that he got through. Mm, all right. Oh, all right. So for everybody that's still in the chat, you can win any download on Lost Art Magic Holy if you answer crap. this question correctly. All right. So we got to decide which uh, which question it was. That, uh, pick a number between 1 and 16. Me? Yeah, yeah. any number between 1 and 16. 8. Eight. All right. Okay. So this is an easy question. This is an easy question because this one was very memorable. So yeah. for everybody in the chat, what was Nick's dream setting for a video that he said uh -huh. when we did the uh, when we did the the twenty questions? He, we asked, "What would be your dream setting for a video?" First person to comment, you get uh, free downloads. Um, someone, while we're waiting for someone to, uh, to answer, hopefully Sasha asked, uh, for everyone, he says, do you feel like social media has grown so much, uh, that if you're on one platform, you have to be on all of them? Uh, and is that even possible because of how much work is required to produce quality content? And he just got it right as well. Sasha got yeah. It right. Sasha, do you feel like Sasha, nice job. Did Sasha win one of the previous ones too? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. No, I think it might be a different, different Sasha. I think it's a different person. Different person. So Sasha, hit me up on mentalism.ca uh, with your email address and the product that you'd like, and I'll let's go. That. Congratulations. Ah, uh, Sasha came close with one. I knew he was guessing uh, before, so yeah. But, uh, oh, congrats! That's very cool. Yeah, but congrats, that's a good Sasha. question about the social media thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to try and focus on all of them at once. Like, yeah. What What would you that's say, true. Nick? Uh, I think just stick to one um, in the beginning, and then start to branch off once you grow a stable following. Mm. Yeah, it's probably easier once you've got a following to bring them yeah. over with you, right? I mean, that's, it's extremely difficult to do that depending on the platform. I think YouTube is, is, uh, is easy to bring that following everywhere else because yeah. YouTube builds that bond with you and the, you, you know, like the viewer and the, the viewer and the content creator. I feel like that yeah. bond is greater than on TikTok. TikTok's more of like, let's go on TikTok and scroll through and find funny memes. So it's hard to really get that like one-on-one -on -one bond and like have that's them true. follow you everywhere else. So yeah, yeah. that's the only downside with TikTok. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Very well, thank you again, man. Uh, we'll be in touch, um, especially if I come to Magic Live. Yep, we'll definitely. See. Maybe we'll move the Thanks, day to guys. the wedding. 
just for Magic Live, I say do it's it. Just for yeah, Magic yeah. Live, just move the wedding, man. Yeah, it's easy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, uh, also, everybody, if you would like to hang out with I'll us, if you would light. like to join this community, you can uh, check out 1v1magic.com. You can join the Magic Discord. So here you can see it in the bottom left over here, uh, 1v1magic.com. And uh, if you go to that website, 1v1magic.com, you can join the Magic Discord. You can hang out with us. You can jam. We have jams every Thursday and every Tuesday. Uh, and uh, it's a great community of hundreds of magicians where you uh, you can meet and hang out. That's how I was able to uh, to meet Ryan. Nick hangs out every so often. And, uh, yeah, it's a really fun community. So check it out. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And we will see you next week with Magic After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is good.